Rachel Archer leads the way after two. Uh, when she checked in, she had, uh, let's see, about a 29-second lead over Rachel Gunnish. Uh, Rachel Archer checks in right there for a completed lap number three. And with that, folks, the white flag is out. the win. There you go. There's your hype moment. <laughs> Sorry about that. You blink, you miss it. You think with 961 riders out there, I could keep them in, in line. <laughs> Iron Man, I think this officially makes you the Iron Woman of GMTC. This is broken foot, so not matter. Shake it, shake it, shake it. There you go. Get you some popping bottles here at the Iron Man GMTC. Cheers, mate. <laughs> Yeah, buddy, that's gonna help. <laughs> <laughs> The game plan for me this weekend is just I want to stay off the ground as much as I can. I haven't been riding anything like this in I don't know how long. So I just want to go ride out there and finish two laps. I saw on Instagram, I get a case of beer from, uh, what's his name, Baylor? What? Stu Baylor, yeah. So I want to go finish two laps so I can get some beer from Stu Baylor. Towery readies himself and he gets set to ready these riders as we said nearly 1,000 strong and let them know it's time to roll in a matter of 10 the race. You did. The last I checked, he was top 30 overall. Looks like I owe him a case of Coors Lattes. I couldn't believe that he was he was the type of guy that drink a Coors Latte, but I, I got a little more respect for Axel now. Uh, I think it will make a woods rider out of him after all. Oh, I just out here living the dream. Yeah. Gotta, you gotta pay the bills somehow, right? You gotta raise. Oh, dude, Stu covered this weekend, dude. I was nice and let him buy it the last race because I was like, ah, oh, first race back, you know, like I'll be nice, but no nice guy this weekend. It's gonna be some bumping for sure. No nice guy. No nice guy. All right, cool. <laughs> Good luck, man. Thanks, I'm gonna man. ask you, are you ready to go? GNCC Racing! watching on screen right now is the top four. They've just started to creep away a little bit from the rest of the XC1 class. Not much distance between them. They can see each other in the corners. They can see each other in the field.
Um, oh, we do. So it looks like Linden Snodgrass leading the way in that one. Fifth overall today. Not that that's anything to sneeze at, but in the last couple of races, we've seen those guys, Mike Wachowski, Johnny yep. Gerrard, uh, up into the, you know, top two, top three overall. Um, and within, you know, striking distance. come into some lap traffic down. That's going to slow Josh String down to even more, and that's going to give Baylor that uh, opportunity to gain those microseconds that it's going to take to put himself in position to try to make the pass on String. Duking it out, wheel to wheel. Johnny Gerard stopped for a splash. Craig DeLong kept on going. off your shoulder after that injury, that shoulder injury this summer. I mean, give it a fist pump to the crowd, right? <laughs> Man, this is a great day in GNCC racing, no doubt about it, to get to see Josh Drink back on the uh, top of the box once again. One heck of a ride, but we've reached round 13 in a rare November round of GNCC racing. Preston County, West Virginia, and CJ Raceway play host to the Amsoil Buckwheat 100. Under sunny skies with record breaking temperatures nearing 80 degrees, it's Sunday and the bikes are ready to roll. With the champ, Caleb Russell, finishing fourth in Indiana, Josh Strang was able to work his way into the lead past Stu Baylor and hang on for a second win of the season. Baylor held on for second, and Ben Kelly finished just behind him to round out the podium. Now, with Russell on the sidelines, it's anyone's race again this weekend. And not just the weekend, but all next season. A deep XC1 field will be even deeper next year with a new rookie class moving up. One of those riders, Craig DeLong, has some unfinished business this year. In a heated XC2 battle, he needs a strong showing today to hang on to the points lead while Mike Witowski, who sits in second, would have to win, and DeLong would have to finish third or worse for the championship to swing his way. We're back in West Virginia for the third time this season. There's two Mountaineers lining up on the front row today. Look for Lane Michael and Thad Duvall to be in the mix. The track this week, though, is a little different from your typical West Virginia rocks. Look for a sandy clay mix with some black mud in spots. In true West Virginia fashion, there's even a coal pile. So who's it going to be? Can Stu Baylor keep his momentum rolling into the offseason? Or will it be another W for Josh Strang? Your guess is as good as mine in the XC2. We've got answers in three hours of GNCC racing to go in 2020. See it all next, live on Racer TV.
from the beautiful mountains of West by God, Virginia. This is GNCC Live. Hello, everyone. I'm Rodney Tomlin along with Mikey Waynes. Johnny Gallagher will be joining us a little later today as well as we bring to you our live coverage of this, the Buckwheat 100. It is round number 13 of America's premier off-road racing championship, the 2020 GNCC Series presented by Specialized and AMA National Championship. And, Mikey, man, I'll tell you what, have we got the stage set for a great uh, season finale championships for the most part have been uh, claimed in the XC1 Pro class I believe also claimed in the XC3 class and many of the other amateur classes as well but that XC2 250 Pro class we've got a, yeah. a barn burner that's uh, really starting to shape up in that one though I'll tell you what uh, last time out uh, we had some great racing and taking a look at the footage from the last round Mikey I mean Wow, what a race. I mean, coming into this one, uh, everybody wondered, would Stu Baylor be able to make it three in a row on yeah. that ride-by-ride -ride Yamaha uh, position that he had achieved there? And, of course, he came back. He answered, I think, uh, pretty loudly as far as that is concerned. But, man, did he have the competition on Sunday. Yeah, no doubt about it. Him and String were going back and forth. And, honestly, it, it, we all thought it was going to come down to bar bang and wheel to wheel at the end. And then, unfortunately, Iron Man Hill took the best of Stu Baylor. Yeah, but before that, you had uh, Caleb Russell, who was right on the rear yeah. wheel of Stu Baylor. And, and I think had it not been for an unfortunate incident uh, with uh, actually Caleb getting together with a downed rider, uh, you could see the rider was down from our, our footage that we were watching on Racer TV. Uh, somehow or another, Caleb clipped the downed rider. He went down, and then something was wrong with Caleb's bike. Now, whether or not it happened during that altercation or not, he had to take a little extended pit stop. He lost quite a bit of time during that time. In doing so, that's when Josh Schrang moved up from that third place position yeah. and then laid chase to Stu Baylor. And that's where it got interesting as well. Those two were going at it pretty well. You saw the time starting to chip away. And then all of a sudden in the pit stop, when uh, Josh had pulled really close to Stu as they came into the pits, Josh gets out of the pits first. <laughs> it was an extended pit stop also yeah. for Stu Baylor. I don't know what happened there, but whatever it was, we had that extended pit stop that kind of cost him the time out there. And like you said, Iron Man Hill, that was the big story maker on that day. Yeah, no doubt about it. Ben Kelly, solid day for him. He's made continual steady progress. I look to see him do some big things today. I can't imagine uh, Ben Kelly wants to leave this 2020 season without a win. Yeah, I know. He, he definitely wants to do that. And racing as well as he has been, as strong as he has been, you know he is due one. But you also got to take into account the hunger of everyone. Everybody. Everybody. <laughs> silly season. Talk about silly season right now. Obviously, you got to wonder. Stu finishing second at the last round of racing behind Josh Strang, who took the win at the Ironman. And then, of course, is he going to go for another win? Yeah. Uh, if you saw the video that uh, Stu posted out this weekend, yeah, he's going for another yes. win. He's going to go for a lot more wins in the future. But Thad Duvall is back. Uh, Trevor Bowen yep. is also back with us. I saw him on Friday. I, I had a quick conversation with him. I said, hey, are you going to be able to ride this? Oh, yeah, I'm racing, he said. And he looks good. Good. Uh, coming off that knee surgery, uh, he seems like he's healed up. Uh, he seems eager enough. He seems mentally fit. Uh, the only question is, is he going to be physically fit? And this is a tight racetrack out here, yep, Mikey. That's exactly right. So many storylines in the <laughs> XC1. We almost forgot XC2. There's yeah. still a championship on yeah, the line. And bad news for uh, those that are following the XC2 yeah. championship. Johnny G Garrard, the Johnny G as we know him, not going to be able to make the race today. Remember, he had that bad get off at Ironman GNCC. I understand that uh, through concussion testing and things like that, they have elected that it be uh, wiser for him not to race more on, on a health issue uh, from a healthy standpoint. So he's not going to be racing. And, I mean, right now, to think that he's going to win the championship, obviously, uh, somebody told me uh, he's got an outside still, chance. It, there's still a possibility. There's still a possibility. Yeah. Crazy. If something happens to the uh, other competitors, Mike Rakowski and Craig DeLong, yeah. uh, who were fierce competitors as well two weeks ago. They were. Craig DeLong finally got back center of the box on the Rockstar Husky, and uh, you know he wants to carry that momentum into this weekend, but Mike Wachowski, he's just as focused. It's going to be a wild one. And the spoilers, Liam Draper yeah. and Lyndon Snodgrass. Oh, Snodgrass. Snodgrass, yeah, Snodgrass Great Snodgrass finishing second at XC2 class. It was a crazy one. And the XC3 class, I think we may have seen the exit of, uh, of Jason, Jason Reigns. Yeah. yeah. So Jason Reigns farewell on the XC3 career, but we know Jason's not going anywhere. He's still going to be racing these GNCCs. Well, as tight as the championship is in the XC2 class, they tell me the racetrack is that tight as well. Let's check in with Jared Bolton and find out what these boys are going to be facing today.
Thanks, guys. Welcome to the Buckwheat 100 GNCC. It's a new property for GNCC, but it's no strange at all for racing. This place has had a lot of local races over the year. However, we've laid it out a lot different. We've put in a lot of new trail. We've really tightened this up. This is a very fast course. It's really tight. Uh, the quad guys, if you don't like the tight stuff, you're probably going to hate me and Ryan Eccles this weekend. But uh, if you do like that tight stuff, you're going to love us because it's uh, pretty tight and twisty. And then for the motorcycles, that should uh, actually stay fairly tight uh, a little bit faster for the bikes but overall this is going to be a really cool race a little bit of a uh, little bit of tight stuff and then you kind of do get into some faster stuff and then we got some big fast field sections as well so as i say every week there's still a little bit of something for everybody great race can't wait to see this all unfold back to you guys All right, thanks a lot, Jared. Looks like these guys have got a challenge for them today, Mikey. And uh, other than that, the only thing that we can do is go racing. I'm ready to go racing. We're going to take it to a quick commercial break. And when we come back, Rodney Tomlin down in the starting line with that iconic 10-second call. When you crave the canyon passes, rocky trails, rutted tracks, the podiums and personal records, it becomes part of you. The choice now is, do you become a wanderer or the wanderer? You just need to ride where you belong. in Cabot, West Virginia, the home of the Buckwheat Festival, the West Virginia Preston County Festival. And we are so fortunate. Here we are, folks, bright sunshine in a mid-November afternoon, and we've got a great weekend of racing. Over 1,200 competitors have lined up on the lines here, uh, here in Preston County, West Virginia, Newburgh, uh, West Virginia. With me today is our landowner, not only our landowner, but he was re-elected to the West Virginia Legislature earlier this week. Uh, we are so happy to have him as an advocate for us. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Buck Jennings. Get Buck Jennings. He is our uh, Grand Marshal for today. Put your hands together, folks, as we get to come to this farm that his family owns, and he supports us. Uh, throughout the year. Thank you, Buck. Thank you, everybody. Hey, we're real proud and real pleased that you all are here. We're hoping that you have a great time. This state is called Almost Heaven. Well, we ordered this weather up just for you guys. We want you to know that so you could enjoy it this weekend. Also, the Buckwheat Festival, we didn't get to bake a bunch of cakes. Usually, we run through thousands of cakes here in Preston County the last week of September but next year if you're in this area stop by everybody in Preston County sells buckwheat cakes this farm is called CJ Farms that's my son Chris his son Corey and my great-grandson 
Kaysen. Now, now you know where to get this CJ Farms from. We thank you that you're here. We hope you have a good time. Be safe and give it everything you got. Thanks for coming and have a great time. Thank you, West Virginia delegate Buck Jennings, once again, for being here and allowing us this opportunity. And now, ladies and gentlemen, with a description of our course and what we have to look forward to here today, our junior trail boss and co-course designer, Mr. Ryan Eccles. Yeah, thank you, Rodney. Yeah, we got to say uh, thanks to Buck for uh, bringing this great weather to us. Uh, being 75 in November in West Virginia is a really big deal, and uh, it's going to make for great racing today. Uh, the morning knocks off some of that slick stuff, so it should be a lot of fun for you guys today. You're going to take off from the start here. You'll head right down into the woods to the two-mile mark. Just be cautious that first lap, guys, when you get down in there. It shouldn't be too dusty. It was pretty good earlier, so just be cautious out through there. It'll take you to the uh, FMF PowerPoint. That first lap, you guys will bypass the pro pits. So the next time through, Jeff Russell will be down there. He'll point you up into the pro pit. Work your way past that. You'll run around the back side of pro pits and uh, some track side there. You drop down over the hill, guys. I know, I guarantee most of you have been out there and looked at it. It's a little soft down there. The morning didn't have any issues, so you guys really shouldn't have any issues. Uh, that will bring you back around to the three-mile. The three, you guys will turn uh, right. So you'll have a short mile there. We took out a little bit from yesterday. That will take you over to the four and to the uh, Monster Mile. Nothing too crazy there, just some uh, good West Virginia coal you'll ride through. That will take you through one of the better parts, I think. Uh, they like called Zach's Roller Coasters. You have to ask Zach why it's called that. But that will take you out past the five-mile mark. It's some good stuff. So after the five guys, there's a downhill. I just went down on the quad. No issues. But about halfway down, right in the middle, there's a little step in it. So just be cautious that first lap. Pay attention. That will uh, bring you back. You'll cross over a little fast road, and then you'll head down into more uh, rocks and a little bit more wet stuff. Down past the mark. And about the 6 8, for anybody that's walked out there, if you haven't walked out there, there's a good little out there. You got the morning on it. The uh, Most of the afternoon clock yesterday really on it. And it's a slick rock hill, but I, I know you guys can do it, so it's in for you. From there, you'll go work your way back up over the 7. It'll open up a little bit. Some good trail around there before you uh, drop back down uh, past the eight mile mark. Uh, after the eight, you'll jump out in that big field out front. That's good stuff. It's uh, a lot of GP type stuff. It's a harder ground. It's not really getting rough. That'll uh, bring you back in a little piece of wood. You'll tra cross over the, uh, the two way, to the 10 mile mark. Uh, it's some good stuff there. That's where you'll run into a couple mud holes uh, after the uh, little bridge we built out there. There's a mud hole, guys. There's no issues with the morning. You can go to the left. You can go to the right. You can go straight through the middle. Wherever you guys need to go, I'll take you out past that point. You'll pop back up in a little piece of grass track. We're heading back down into the woods at the 11-mile mark. And another little piece of woods. Guys, do not go left out into that uh, kind of the iron mud out there. There's uh, orange mud. You guys will make it on the right. The further you go out to the left, you are going get, might get stuck, and you're going to be sitting there for a while. It's going to be hard to get you out. So that will uh, bring you up into the finish. You have a little bit of track side. That will bring you back out around uh, just over here to the right of us, a little piece of woods. You'll head down that sand wash. It's getting a little whoopy in that sand, so bring a little Florida up here, I guess, with this weather. That will bring you back up the hill to the one. You'll drop back down uh, another little hill and before you head back up again. When you get out through there, you'll have another downhill, guys. The morning didn't have any issues. We put uh, some dangers there. The dangers are there for a reason, so just pay attention to those. That'll bring you back here behind the start. You'll jump into a little bike-only piece there. It's not too much, and it'll tie back in. So you guys right at 11 miles still. Should be a lot of fun, so good luck. Have fun. Pay attention to those arrows. And one last reminder. Safety first. GNCC racing, like all motorsports, can be dangerous. Racers, now that you have had an opportunity to inspect the course, have heard the race procedures and a description of the course, if you feel that either you or your machine is not prepared, then now is the time for you to withdraw for a complete refund of your entry fee, no questions asked. It is your responsibility to operate your machine in a safe manner, maintaining control at all times. Extreme caution is required when approaching areas with high concentrations of and family members. Do not unnecessary risk that endanger the safety of fans, crew members, and family members. You will be penalized for racing. Crew members, family members, and race fans, due to the nature of GNCC racing, there is no fence barrier around the race course. It is your responsibility to keep 
yourself and your children a safe distance from the race course. Never turn your back on oncoming racers and remember, stay off the racetrack. For the safety of everyone, unauthorized drones are not allowed at GNCC and will be confiscated. And finally, these are challenging times and we must all do our part to keep ourselves and each other safe from infectious disease. Please maintain a safe six foot distance from people you do not live with and wear a face mask when you cannot social distance. Wash your hands often and use hand sanitizer. And although we realize this may be an inconvenience, it's necessary for your safety. Thank you for your cooperation. And now, ladies and gentlemen, to ask one final blessing on this 2020 GNCC season, Mr. Ricky Towery. Thank you, Rodney. And let's do go to the Lord and have a word of prayer together this afternoon. Heavenly Father, once again, we just thank you for bringing us all together safely. And around, you brought us to such a beautiful place, such a beautiful day. We thank you for the Jennings family for letting us use this piece of property to enjoy our sport. Lord, once again, back in April, we wasn't even sure if he's going to get a season in. We stand here today before you with 13 rounds, a complete season. We thank you for each and every race that you let us put on and have, Lord. We thank you for that. Lord, continue to watch over the military men and women in all parts of the world each and every day. Do be with our leaders that they will make the right decisions for us. Lord, we know that the holiday seasons, they are just right around the corner. Help us take time at Thanksgiving to be thankful for what you blessed us with each and every day. And when Christmas does arrive, help us be happy and realize that Christmas is all about you sent your son to us so he could grow up and later on die on the cross so our sins could be forgiven so we could have eternal life. Lord, we just thank you once again for everything you do for us. We ask that you watch over us this winter. Let everybody have a safe winter and spend time with their families. Lord, once again, we ask you'll take us all home safely when it's over with. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And now, ladies and gentlemen, if you would, please remain standing, stand at attention, remove those caps, and cross those hearts as we honor the greatest nation in the world with the playing of our national anthem. Oh, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through Rollers fight for the ramp past streaming and the rockets air, the bombs bursting in air. Was still there. Oh, say, does that fangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free? And the Have it, folks. The stage is set. And one final time to meet our starting lineup. Rolling to the line today in accordance to points to the first 12 rounds of the Grand National Cross Country Championship as we roll into round 13. He rolls to the line first today, second in points for this 2020 championship so far. And of course, two wins to his credit. A former champion of the Grand National Cross Country Series hailing from Australia on a Babbitts Online Monster Energy Team Green Kawasaki, the freight train, Josh Strang. 
Rolling to the line sack of the day. He is third in points aboard the 127 from Livingston, Tennessee. Also on a Babbitt's online Monster Energy Team Green Kawasaki, Jordan Ashburn. Rolling to the line third today, fourth in points aboard the number 514 with three wins and a podium in the last four rounds of racing. Hailing from Hodges, South Carolina aboard an Am Pro Yamaha, Stu Baylor. Rolling to the line next aboard the number 530. He is fifth in points from Harrington, Connecticut on the FMF KTM Factory Racing KTM, Ben Kelly. Rolling to the line next aboard the number 314 from Honey Path, South Carolina on a Factory One Sherco, the Grizzly Grant Baylor. Next, he's been on fire as of late from Boonville, North Carolina, originally from the great state of West Virginia, on an Ampro Yamaha, Lane Michael. Riding a bird to number 410 from Birdsboro, Pennsylvania, on a Phoenix Racing Honda, Andrew DeLong. Next, aboard the number 484, it is GNCC Racing debut from Birdsboro, Pennsylvania on a GPMX School Team Green Kawasaki, Frenchy Greg Paymart. The number 739, welcoming back from Morganton, North Carolina on the Rockstar Energy Factory Husqvarna Racing Husky, Trevor Bollinger. The number 27 from Blacksburg, South Carolina on a KLM Motorsports Kawasaki, Evan Earl. And last and certainly not least, from Williamstown, West Virginia on a Rockstar Energy Factory Husky Racing Husky, Bad Fat Duval. And that, ladies and gentlemen, your starting lineup for this, the Amsoil Buckwheat 100 GNCC. Our riders finding their way on the starting line now. Ricky Towery finding his way to the first turn as he begins to orchestrate these starts. Our maestro, if you will. And conductor of ceremonies, Rick Geek Towery, going to make things happen here today. There's no doubt about that, my friends. And as we uh, look up into the term one, he's already told us one minute. So we are less than a minute away from going GNCC racing here now. And, of course, so much on the line for so many. Yeah, it's the last race. Championships have been decided, but it's silly season. One last opportunity to make that explanation point, to stake that claim heading into the offseason that you are going to be the one to beat come 2021. So the nerves begin to really intensify. The hearts begin to pound and the eyes begin to squint as we wait for our cues from Ricky Towery as he gets set to signal these riders next. We'll be one minute away from going GNCC racing and this is where it really starts to get. One minute guys, one minute. This is where it starts to get thick for these guys, my friends. The last minute preparations, the rituals that they must go through before the waving of that green flag. They're all making those final checks at this moment as they await the next call. But it ends in sign here from Ricky. Shut them down, guys. Shut them down. Shut them down. Shut them down. We are now less than 30 seconds away from going racing here in the great state of West Virginia. And I'm going to ask you, are you ready to go GNCC racing? Well, that's pretty good, West Virginia. But I'm going to ask you one more time, one last time. Are you ready to go GNCC racing? seconds and row number one the xc1 pro will be off and rolling at the amsoil buckwheat 100 gncc
Around the first turn, it's the 127 emerging into the number two turn. That is Jordan Ashburn of the Babbitt's Online Monster Energy Kawasaki grabbing the early lead here today. XC2 250 Pro Class coming up next. Ryder Laftery, Sam Evans, Liam Draper, Mike Witkowski, Hunter Bush, Ben Parsons, Jesse Ainsley, Craig DeLong, Benjamin Elko, Ben Bowens, Hunter Newark, Jonathan Johnson, and Cody Barnes in 10 seconds. The 328, Jesse Ansley, a great jump off the line. How's it going to fare? In the second turn, it's going to be the 24, Big Sam Evans out of St. Albans, West Virginia on an AOMC P3 Composites Fly Racing Back Drive, grabbing the early lead in this one. Down to the FMF XC3 125 Pro-Am. Max Fernandez, Mike DeLosa, Eli Childers, Jason Lipscomb, and Zach Hayes in 10 seconds. Ninety-three. E like shoulders like a lightning off that starting line out front by only a half a bike length as we head to the stripe. It's going to be Childers with the early lead in this one on that Moose Racing Rings Riding University Dirt Squirt Racing Yamaha. 250A class coming up next. We got Tristan Landers, Zachary Davids, and Matthew Davis, Bolton Barab. Seconds. Brendan Poling, Braden Nolette, Nate Miser, Jonathan McDougal, Dakota DeVore, Gavin Sivan Piper, and Andrew Gross. Four thirty-two. Braden Nolette coming out of that first turn out front, grabbing gears and about three bike lengths lead as he crafts crosses the whole shot strike. Right from Motorworks Race Tech, bulletproof designs and fly racing out of Charlton, Massachusetts. Coming up next, our next row, the Open A class in 10 seconds. Cubby Becker, Tyler Braniff, Alex Luger, Zachary Hugel, Chase Hayes, Nathan Rector, Dylan Dela Cruz, Will Sivan Piper, Chuck Duckworth, also Ezra Prine, and Joshua Ellis. That's John Duckworth, not Chuck Duckworth, but John Duckworth as they round the first turn of the Open A class. The number 95 grabbing the early lead. That is 85 of Nathan Rector from Rogersville, Missouri out of Maryville Power Sports Moose Racing Max's back machine. Going next to the 150A class. Seconds. Alex Metz, Cole Hickman, Matthew Howard, Christian Evans, and Nicholas DeBatalo. E. Bartolo, sorry about that. My mouth got a little full, but hey, here we go. You see if he can get to, into that little early lead out here as we swap him around. 578, Nicholas D. Bartolo out of Tamak, Tamak, Pennsylvania. He throws two curveballs at me. Four stroke A lights coming at you next. 13 riders ready to roll in. 10 seconds. Cole Whitmer, Tyler Palmer, Adam Hollenkamp, Russell Smith, Mitchell Owenby, Justin Lafferty, Hayden Dillon, Adam Parker, Johnny Fleming, Caleb Baltimore, Cody Meeks, Michael Wilbur, and Cooper Jones. see a couple getting out of shape there but the 800 of cooper jones from lawton pennsylvania on an pro yamaha back by factory connection and fmf gonna grab the early lead in this one to the valley 30 plus class coming up next in 10 seconds joe marsh louis oleon james singer andrew france kyle dangler james bauer matt modick and nate cronk Around the first turn, a jockey for position. It's going to be the 433 Andrew France from Louisville, Ohio, on a Beaver Creek Cycles MBR suspension Vert MX graphics backed machine. Coming up next, senior A40 plus in 10 seconds. Shotgun Sean Remington, a smiling Frank Messina, Dwayne Connor, Jason Rains, Vinny Tomic, Clark Munger, Bo Hamlet, Joel Stoles, and Darren Darmos. Four 
former pro rider Dwayne Connor here out of Houston, Pennsylvania. We'll see how things go for him. Let's see, 53, Shotgun Sean Remington out of New Salem, PA on the Moose Kenda Factory Connection. Coastal Racing Back Machine grabbing the early lead. Junior AB 25 plus class in 10 seconds. Matt Bruffy, Garrett Maynard, Evan Maynard, Grant Marriott, Andrew Loudermilk, Austin Franklin, Matthew Pratola, G Cody Jeffers, Andrew Boggs, and Jonathan Harker. It's the 315 315 Gary Marriott from Ulster, Pennsylvania, the Marriott Trucking Factory Connection, Moose Racing Back Machine, 250B class. Coming up next, got Jared Strawn, also Warren Friend, Nick Martin, Buggy Funk. Happy birthday, buddy. Ten seconds. Austin Glass, Aram Moffitt, Joshua Connor, Landon Beatty, Holden Ritchie, Greg Masai, Timmy McIntyre, Michael Muovic, Leroy Patrick, Christopher Eddy, Hunter Morris, Ryan Richard, Tyler Shields, Ben O'Dell, Ethan Deagle, Lane Whitmer, Cameron Madison, Aaron Marks, Grant Davis, and Noah Marks as we roll past the finish, or excuse me, the whole shot stripe. It looked like maybe the 442 of Tyler Shields. That was on a Husky, though, so might have missed that one on you. But as we go next to the 150B class, Seconds. Hayden Serena, Peyton Gwynn, Jacob Thomas, Blake Kohler, Toby Cleveland, Nick Barrier, Caden Childers, Maverick Thaxton, Trenton Wood, Braden Hashman, Kyle Dutton, and Aiden Myers. Three twenty-one. Peyton Gwynn from Parkersburg, West Virginia, Dunlop FXR in Flow Vision Crash Addicts Back Ride. Up next is the Vet V 30 plus class coming next. 19 riders strong with Larry Hopper, Cody Hosta, Adam O'Dell, Jeremy Stowobi, Nick Plank. Ten seconds. Ernest Martin, Adam Glass, Ashton Glass, David Ravinsky, Michael Davis, Christian Honeycutt, Tyler Click, Jeremiah Taylor, Josh Real, Cameron Ware, Ambrose Kalaski, Joshua Webb, Peter Arbanes, and Jim Johnson. It's the 9-1-1, Josh Webb, Webb from Montville, Ohio on his KTM. As we go next to the open B class, set and ready to roll in. Ten seconds. Matt Sorge, Stone Clark, Trenton Madison, Dominic Jarvis, Cody DeLuce, Dylan Fleming, Wyatt Ford, also Gregory Tenney, Paul Fitzwater, Ryan Tucker, Colton Hawk, Quentin Clark, Jacob Maynard, Dawson Nixon, Cordell Clark, and Jamison Hardy. Open B off and rolling now. Dawson Nixon, a great start for the 767 Kawasaki rider out of Jonesville, North Carolina. Nixon Motorsports back right. Going to take the early lead in this one now as we sort him out out of turn one now. A couple guys going down. Ricky Towery signaling our next row, the senior B40 plus class. Let them know. Damn! Seconds. Gene Swidwood, Leon Whitaker, Josephton Ramos, Scott Lyons, also Brent Maynard, Ray Hirsch, or Hinch, Scott Dallin, Jeffrey Harms, Rick Liller, Shannon Hatfield, Mike Horwat, and Jason Wallace. Holy smokes. Do you see that lead? By the 788 of Jason Wallace from Conway, South Carolina. He's riding a rocket out there today. Four-stroke B-Lights class, 16 riders strong, coming at you next. Ten seconds. Jesse Groves, Levi Ward, Trevor Golden, Miles Gefkin, Briar Burgess, Carter Kearns, Jack Joy, Ty Ely, Max Grant, Anthony Blackburn, Austin Mentz, Logan Robinette, Brandon Bollinger, Hayden Schultz, Cody Reese, and Colby Dunham. It says 276 on the bike. It's a 419. Ty Ely out of Waynesburg, Pennsylvania on a Teeley Energy Racing, Moose Racing, KTM back ride. 
And that, my friends, will wrap it up as far as the start is concerned. And what a day we got here today in the great state of West Virginia. The Stu crew out in full force going for his fourth win of 2020. Can he make that happen? And, man, I tell you, Josh Strain, can he get three wins in a row? What about the back at welcoming back uh, Trevor Bollinger? He's going to be a threat to uh, work with. But I'm telling you, folks, today's the day. Keep an eye on the 523 Lane Michael. He's in his home territory. Can he make things happen? Stick around to find out. GNCC Live continues after this. When you crave the canyon passes, rocky trails, rutted tracks, the podiums and personal records, it becomes part of you. The choice now is, do you become a wanderer or the wanderer? You just need to ride where you belong. Born of family values and a homegrown work ethic, Kemetic Gasket seals your machine so you can focus on the finish line. Kemetic Gaskets are the competitive standard for racers who demand the very best. Kemetic Gaskets are constructed from superior materials designed to perform in the most demanding environment. Whether it's championships on the line or a day in the dirt with friends, professionals and enthusiasts depend on Kemetic. Kemetic Gaskets sealing championships since 1989. adventures on hold but now is the perfect time to prepare for their return amsoil has your back with fast free shipping and ordering has never been easier just look up your vehicle select your product add an oil change to your cart and check out spend fifty dollars on amsoil products and shipping is on us order now at amsoil.com even when you're the best, you never stop striving to be better. With over 40 years of experience in motorcycle sales and service, we know racing. Our inventory of Yamaha motorcycles, sport bikes, dirt bikes, ATVs, and side-by-sides is extensive and constantly changing. Stop by Lojack Cycle Sales today in Tarentum, Pennsylvania, and visit our online inventory at www.lojacks.com. Yamaha YZs. It's why we ride. Hi, my name is Andrea Lee, the director.
Cross Country is America's premier off-road motorcycle racing series. Riders compete on extended cross-country courses of 8 to 12 miles per lap and races lasting up to three hours. And welcome back to GNCC Live. I'm Mikey Waynes. You've already heard from my colleague, Mr. Rodney Tomlin, down there with those iconic 10-second calls. And we'll be joined in the booth here momentarily with uh, Johnny Gallagher. Johnny Gallagher, excuse me, Johnny G, uh, better known as ATV Pro. I'll be in here doing some play-by-play -play with us uh, here this afternoon. This is the Amsoil Buckwheat 100. The last and final round of the 2020 season. Hard to believe round 13 is here. And to get us started, we'll look at the specialized rapid replay. The XZ1, row number one, your pro class. Up for grabs right here. Ricky Towery with the waving of the green flag. We're off, we're rolling, we're jockeying for position. And how about that start at a Jordan Ashburn? Snags a whole shot, but uh, duly noted, Dad Duvall in the mix of things. You see Lane Michael on screen and Josh Strang, as well as uh, Stu Baylor back there and look like the fourth place position uh, heading into the woods. So I'm ready. Let's sort it out. The last pro championship, pro-am, I should say, championship to be decided today, the XC2 class. Big things, that's gonna be a major focus here today. And boy, how about the start for this guy out of the XC2? As you see these guys jockeying for position right here. And I believe it is going to be Sam Evans taking that whole shot right there. And great start for him. You saw right out of the corner, right side of your screen. I believe that was the 282 of Mike Wikowski up into that number one spot. Now keep in mind, he's got the battle today between him and Craig DeLong. No Johnny Girard today. More on that this afternoon. And now the FMF XC3, the uh, 125 machines. Gotta be honest, nothing sounds as good as the 125s singing through the woods of West Virginia. Gotta love it. And from what we understand, no Jason Reigns today. I believe he's, uh, he's done with the FMF XC3 career, but uh, there's Childers taking that right there. So big congratulations to uh, Childers taking the whole shot out of that FMF XC3 class. So we are off and rolling here. And uh, looking at your leaders on screen there at the Yamaha Racing Skycam, man, already getting some distance. That was one of the things uh, that we saw a lot of yesterday. Uh, copy that, uh, Adam. But, uh, yeah, one of the things about this course, and, and when we get a moment, an open moment here, uh, we will let you know about uh, what to expect out of this track exactly with the track map. But for now, with the leaders on screen, uh, very tight course. If you guys didn't hear uh, the track description from Jared Bolton prior to the race start, um, pretty tight course for these guys. Uh, you know, it's difficult to make passes as far as the ATVs yesterday. Uh, obviously, bike's going to have a few more choices. But uh, from the general consensus from everybody was, there are places to pass on this track, but you better commit. And uh, these these few open sections we got allow for these guys to pick up some speed and some steam through there. Uh, but uh, definitely going to be a, uh, a barn burner. Coming into this one, Josh Strang uh, coming off the win uh, at Ironman a couple weeks ago. And uh, I'm pretty sure that is still Ashburn out front. He had the whole shot. And uh, he's one of those guys we've talked about off and on this season about uh, being able to put together that complete race, that full three hours, and uh, fight for that podium position. It's eluded him all year long. And uh, we kind of wait to see if maybe he can put it all together today. And I believe, like I said, I believe that's jo uh, Jordan Ashburn out front right now. And I know it's early. I know it's a three-hour race. But you got to believe that uh, Jordan Ashburn is feeling good right now about this one. Uh, and, of course, uh, the big story, of course, Stu Baylor and the things that he has done. Uh, hopefully you uh, caught Mason Raiders' uh, video 
on Stu Baylor. That was a pretty incredible one. If you hadn't seen that, watch it after the show. Say that. Uh, joined in the booth now by the one, the only, Mr. Johnny Gallagher. And, Johnny, uh, we've got the bird's eye view right now, but from what I can tell, I think that is still Jordan Ashburn out front who got the whole shot. But, uh, like I said, little bird's eye view. Yep, coming out into the open here, looking as they are uh, working their way through these faster sections of the uh, – track it's you know this is as you pointed out very one lined and tight through much of the course but this is where it opens up and this is the opportunity to kind of stretch the legs a little bit on those big 450s and jordan ashburn leading the way is what it looks like to me as well so this yamaha sky cam i, I heard uh yesterday i heard you guys talking about it and, and was able to hear some stuff about it last night pretty cool to be able to follow the action yeah. like this for, for it helps long, to they be said. racing in november and there's no leaves <laughs> yes yes uh in a lot of ways uh obviously not ideal to be racing right. in november but at the same time man we're racing and that's what it's all about and uh you know we've said it so many times this weekend but uh hats off not only to racer productions the racer tv crew but you know all of the fans and the participants of gncc racing for bearing with a, a very difficult 2020 that you know just couldn't have turned out any better for the circumstances given and, and hats off to everybody for working yeah. together making it through and uh really an awesome season i mean we've seen battles in every class we've seen battles in uh, in our overall championships and uh we've seen a lot of unprecedented things and and uh you you know, I, I feel like today could be a day where we just put a little exclamation point on an already wild and wild <laughs> yes. and wi wild and willy 2020. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. And, and off the start, um, uh, Thad Duvall was up there battling up in the top four into the top three. Trevor Bollinger was up there. So the two Rockstar Husky guys, um, you know, if nothing else, they've got something to prove to themselves. Trevor coming back, um, saw him right before the race, gave him a quick fist bump, said, man, it's good to see you back here at the race. So going to be interesting to see how those guys stack up. And, of course, Caleb's wrapped up the championship in the XC1, not racing here today, if you guys were wondering about that. Um, and, but but big all eyes, I think, today on XC2, that championship yep. yet to be decided. I believe coming in it was kind of a three-way battle with Gerard Wachowski and uh, DeLong and I understand Gerard uh, thanks to I think a crash at Ironman is yeah, not racing I, here today. It was a, a couple a series of crashes. Yeah. Ironman. This is actually the last two turns before the finish here so we'll z zoom Sweet. in on this and uh, we'll get some results of exactly who is leading on screen. We believe that's Jordan Ashburn. There we go. A little different shot. That's Jordan Ashburn leading the way on the number 127 Monster Energy Babbitt's Online Kawasaki. I uh, can tell, you know, Mikey, we, we watch these guys long enough. We can tell by the riding styles. We don't need to that's see the numbers. But that is definitely Ashburn. So, wow. You know, it's been a while since we've seen Jordan lead. We've seen him up front. He's been in the top three a lot. Um, but uh, to see him leading um, and, and looking like he's putting on a really good pace, he and our second place rider, which is Thad Duvall, are starting to stretch away and Thad Duvall hometown boy man you know West Virginia's own you know he's going to be looking to make a statement today and, and all these guys are it's going to yeah. be all about trying to uh put a little bit of a uh a, a question mark in in the other riders minds uh looks like third and fourth rider were just all over each other who was Stu that Baylor and Ben Kelly yeah so those are the two that have been the most consistent through the last uh through the last four rounds of racing those guys have been each been on the podium every time Stu obviously with three wins and a second place finish Ben Kelly on the box every one of those races is quite a few seconds and a third uh, there to go with it. But uh, here we see again, Ashburn out, making the dust, making the roost, picking his own lines, and uh, stretching out just a little bit over Thad Duvall, but Thad looking good and looking comfy there in that second place spot. So, uh, Johnny, yesterday, I believe you guys ran, what, four laps for XC1 uh, yeah, today? That was, that was three too many. <laughs> well, that was going to be my question. These guys, they're out there. They've got another hour on top of that, and I believe they, at one point, we were about a minute and a half ahead of where we were at yesterday. So probably expect, what, six or seven lap range. I'd probably venture to say six, given the fact that we might end up racing in the dark. Yeah, I'd say, well, it, I, I, if I had to guess right now, I'd say six lap, six lap race, but obviously we're just guessing oh, and sure. conjecturing, um, you know, anything could happen and it could turn out to be seven or, or even more. Um, but my guess would be a six-lap race for these guys. The morning uh, yesterday was four. Our race was four. The morning today was four. Uh, so I anticipate another two laps being enough to get us within that time frame where we need to be. Um, and uh, I was just joking about that. You know, it was <laughs> this, this was not my style of racetrack. I, I struggled yesterday, did not do well at all. There's Baylor and Ben Kelly on screen. Baylor in front, Kelly behind. So that's third and fourth there on screen from our Yamaha Racing Sky Cam. And like we said, man, what a pr what a cool view here. Um, you can see the split line. Stu Baylor taking the outside. Ben Kelly cutting it a little bit shorter. But Stu able to carry more momentum around the outside and uh, able to hang out of that third place spot. But uh, it's a very dynamic track out there, Mikey. It's, uh, it's rocky in places. Um, there's good dirt in places. There's super slippery 
dirt in places. Um, and it's, as, as we talked about, it's fairly one-lined, at least on the ATV side. Um, bike side, there's going to be a few more lines opening up just because they can fit through some places that we can't and straight straight line some things that we've got to go around um, just because of the width of the machines. Um, that being said, it was, uh, you know, I, I learned long ago, not every GNCC track during the 13-round series is going to be made to my yeah. specifications <laughs> and liking. Um, so there's going to be guys out there that are just going to be loving this track today. And I'll tell you what, one of those guys, I'm going I'm to make a little bit of an early prediction here. Oh boy. I think... I'm not saying he's going to win, but I think it's going to be a good day for Thad Duvall. Thad it's rides so these far, conditions yeah. very well, and and that's even before coming in. Right. Um, I actually I nailed the top three yesterday in my pre-race predictions. I did get second and third wrong. I had Cole for second uh, and Jared McClure for third, but I did hear that Cole had a pretty good grasp oh, on yeah. second until he had an issue. So yeah, that's you know, base starter button. Yeah, based purely the on their their speed um yeah this this uh coming into this section here there's there's a couple uh, uphills that really kind of separate uh right here you can see they're going to go down you kind of jump and you go up again and then there's a fast line to the left there it looks like those guys kind of missed it um there's a little bit faster way around to the left there you can carry your speed more but again on bike they might be able to fit through some stuff but uh yeah i think thad duvall is gonna have a good day today um you know jordan ashburn no slouch in the rocks and and we need to kind of point out here mikey it's not like this track as a whole is a rock track there yeah. are just some sections that are very rocky so what now we've never raced a national on this uh, CJ Raceway here in West Virginia. We've never raced a national here before. Um, they have raced some locals. What does that do for, on the pro level? Who, does it give an advantage to the veteran guys? I mean, does it kind of even the playing field across the board? The fact that we've never raced a national here. Uh, what is the perspective on that from a pro level? Um, I, I think it does, but it doesn't because I can tell you a few of these guys, Thad Duvall likely being one of them, have probably raced this property yeah, a number of times. that's true, that's true. Um, because they've had uh, New East Coast races here. They've had Mountain State races here. They've had, years ago, they had Kuntz Series races here, the Paul Kuntz Promotion Series. Um, I think I actually raced what was called a KSR or KRS Series back in the day here, um, back about 12 years ago. Um, so there's been a lot of racing done on this facility. But, yes, um, to answer your question, you know, obviously most of the tracks that we go to we've gone to many many times over the years oh look at this so our second and third place battle has now worked its way up and yeah. they are just about to the rear wheel of our second place rider which is Thad Duvall there's Duvall on screen oh, wow. up at the top there look how much they close that gap down so right now the boys on the move are Stu Baylor in third and the fourth place rider uh, of Ben Kelly they are closing oh in. wow uh, oh, there look you at go. This. Ben Kelly up next to Stu Baylor didn't quite make the pass but he got right next to him there <laughs> this is the stuff we need to see all <laughs> yes, the time exactly Exactly. Uh, how, how much do you think these guys are playing into it? By the way, taking a look real quick, there's the FMF PowerPoint seeing uh, outside of the bird's eye view. Get a better idea of these speeds these guys are running. By the way, XC2, we'll see them come through here in a moment. Mike Wachowski leading that. The guy's competing. He gets primarily Craig DeLong back in the number four spot. Um, what is uh, – oh, crap, I had a question. Now I completely lost my train of thought. We were talking about the difference of uh, – actually, uh, another rider I just saw on screen I expect big things out of today, Lane Michael. The 5 oh, yeah. I can guarantee you during his amateur years he raced – at least several handfuls of races here. So he knows the property, he knows the dirt. There's Baylor, there's Kelly. So that is third and fourth. As we see, they've crept up on Thad Duvall, who still is not all that far behind Jordan Ashburn, our leader. Um, I see I'm looking here. It looks like uh, Grant Baylor now working his way down VP Fuels Pro Row. Andrew DeLong is through. Uh, and here we are starting. There is Josh Strang. So Strang a ways not back a great here. start for Strang. Um, you have to believe he must have had some lap one yeah. struggles because obviously our round 12 winner and has just been coming on stronger and stronger each round as of late. For him to be that far back on lap Ninth. one, he's he's definitely had some struggles, but don't count that man out. The freight train, Josh Strang, he will charge back onto the tracks. Yeah, no doubt about that. Here is probably our XC2 leader, if I had to guess. There he is, Mike Wachowski on the 282. Uh, so he is charging there and uh should be liam draper at least when they checked in yep, and the time is. distance was about two seconds yep draper is right behind wakowski draper's another one who lives very close to here looks like it barnes. might be uh cody yep cody barnes the number 99 there in third on that factory beta right it's been riding very well as of late and there is the 342 of craig delong now that looks to be uh jonathan johnson there or one of the johnsons could be brody johnson uh, that's one of the Phoenix Hondas there. And then Jesse Ansley having a good ride there, looking like he is up in the sixth place spot. So that's the uh, highest we've seen Jesse ride uh, in this XC2 class since his debut uh, over a year ago. 
Um, looks like Ryder Lafferty uh, there in maybe in the seventh place spot. Jesse Ainsley, one of those guys that, you know, I, I, I thought uh, it would take him some time to adjust to that XC2 class coming off the uh, XC3 125 championship, and that definitely had been the case this year. So he's probably one of those guys you can throw in into the silly season of, hey, if nothing else, i got to prove to myself that I can compete and run with these guys and end the season on a high note. Absolutely. You know, and, and I, on a lot, I, I, you know, I'm, I consider Jesse a friend and I have no problem. There's Ben Nelko uh, coming by through VP Fuels Pro Row, another local rider there. So that should round out just about our top 10 in that XC2 class. And again, we're going to keep an extra close eye on that today and we'll keep tabulating the points. Um, I believe the points gap as they run right now, Mike Wachowski would be your overall winner for the season because I believe I'd have to look but the, as they run right now there's a nine point gap back to second and then there's another uh, three points to third so that would be 12 points and I think the gap um, unfortunately I have no service here so I can't I, I know I just thought uh, the same we'll, thing uh, we'll I have to get, to get that to confirm but I believe right now it is Wachowski leading the championship on as they run on the course. So here he is. There's your leader, Jordan Ashburn. Thad Duvall second, Ooh. Stu Baylor third, Ben Kelly fourth, and they can all see each other now. <laughs> it's tightening up, Mikey. Is that is the Monster Mile that section, uh, that Cole Mountain, whatever you want to call it, is it as gnarly as it looks? Um, It wasn't really that bad yesterday. I didn't feel like, honestly, the section after it right here that they're going into. Pretty rough. I believe it's called Zach Zigzag or Zigzags Rollers. I heard um, about that. Roller coaster, and, man, that section <laughs> is gnarly. It's just up, down. The ground's real soft. There's rock mixed in. Very unpredictable traction and footing. Um, it's just very hard to carry your speed through that section. So um, I, I struggled all day yesterday through that section. I know a lot of guys seem to. And look at this, man. Things are tightening up even more. These guys are pretty much nose to tail. They're second, third, fourth, all separated by man. just barely over a couple bike lengths. So you got a couple guys in there wanting to, well, I think all four really wanting to prove something. I mean, all all top four riders, Ashburn, Duvall, Baylor, Kelly, and uh, you can even go back to fifth pay, place, Trevor Bullinger, to me, are all names that stand out that they've got something to prove here at the end of the season. And, you know, obviously the big thing next year, no Caleb Russell. So we're going to have a new champion in 2021, and everybody wants to be the guy, and I think everybody believes they will be the guy. Wachowski on screen? Yep, there's Wachowski in the Monster Mile, so we'll see how they still run Ooh, second place tight. still liam draper the 198 on that tealy energy ktm machine a little bit of a gap now back to the third place ride that's opened up a little bit but it is still the 99 of cody barnes and back there in the fourth place spot is the 342 rockstar husky of craig delong and he is lurking there uh looking like he's on a mission knowing probably what he needs to do that is one of the johnsons i can't tell which um good question jonathan jo i should be jonathan johnson now look at this Whoa. on screen, wheel to wheel. And that looks, yeah, we can still see Ashburn right ahead of them. Now there is only two bikes there. So we may have, and I wouldn't say lost, but somebody's either gained or lost a little bit of time there. Um, hard to see exactly. Um, oh yeah, you can see some of these technical sections. These guys are just crawling their way through. Oh, nope, there's still all three of them. Oh, yeah. It was just the angle we were at. So Ashburn just up ahead there, and then this is your battle for second, third, fourth. Thatch Hall, Stu Baylor, Ben Kelly, and Mikey, let, let's talk a little bit about this. You mentioned <laughs> these four guys, all as well as Trevor Bolton. Yeah. Obviously, everybody on the course has something to prove, but these four each have their own very different reasons for really wanting this win today. Besides the fact of a GNCC win, you know, the, the monetary rewards, the yeah. kudos, the attaboys that come with it, you know, the man out front right now, Jordan Ashburn, leading the way. It's been a challenging season for him. Oh, no you doubt. Know, he's been in a, in a position to battle for podiums so many times this year uh, and just hasn't been able to seal the deal. So what better way to show up on the podium yeah. than in the middle with the oh, win? Yeah. You know, and that would be a big statement. I know we're hearing... Um, I, I believe it's official. I don't know if I'm saying thing. I, we never know. Like, <laughs> right, we hear right, silly right, season, right. but I don't believe it's a rumor. Jordan Ashburn will not be back with that Babbitts Kawasaki team next year. He will be with the uh, Land Mills XC Husky team. Um, so it'll be a change of ride for him uh, next year. The Babbitts team will be coming back with Josh Strang and their uh -huh. XC2 rider. Uh, 
why am I forgetting his name? Lyndon Snodgra oh, yes. Snodgrass. Um, so Jordan Ashburn will be moving on to a different team. So in one hand, he's, he's probably going to want to reward that team for the two years that they oh, gave sure. him. Give him that win that has eluded him. On the other hand, maybe just kind of a, hey, guys, just so you know, I'm capable of a win. Yeah, for you sure. Know, to kind of hype up the new team. Then you go back to Thad Duvall. Basically been off the bike, hasn't been riding, but just a few short weeks, maybe, maybe a month, five weeks or so now at this point. Had a, had a you know disaster of a season from the standpoint of came in, um, had a knee injury, known knee injury coming in, decided he wasn't going to get it fixed, thought he would be able to manage it, and you know now he's back, he's fixed up, yeah. he's, he's had that knee surgery, he's healthy, he's 100%, um, and he wants to flex on these guys and show them, hey, I understand Caleb's not going to be back next year, but you guys remember that guy that was battling oh, wheel to wheel yeah. with him over race wins countless times in the yep. last three, four years? Oh, yeah. That was me, and this is my championship. Yeah. Move back one more spot. Stu Baylor won three of the last four races, second at our last race. You know, he's been on fire. He's really meshed well with that new team, that new bike. Obviously, you know, the list of reasons that Stu Baylor has something to right, prove right. Is, is so long we couldn't even sit <laughs> exactly. here and talk about it. Again, you pointed out Mason Raider doing that little docu-series. Mm -hmm. um, and then, obviously, the rider right behind him there in fourth, Ben Kelly. A lot of hype coming into the season. One race his last year after he moved up and uh, hasn't actually gotten that done. He's been consistent podium guy since he came back. But, uh, yeah, so, so each of those guys have something to prove. So many storylines uh, coming into today. So many storylines to finish out the season. Right now, the big one. Can Jordan Ashburn capture that XC1 win? GNCC Live continues after this. When you crave the canyon passes, rocky trails, rutted tracks, the podiums and personal records, it becomes part of you. The choice now is, do you become a wanderer or the wanderer? You just need to ride where you belong. Born of family values and a homegrown work ethic, Kemetic Gaskets seals your machine so you can focus on the finish line. Kemetic Gaskets are the competitive standard for racers who demand the very best. Kemetic Gaskets are constructed from superior materials designed to perform in the most demanding environment. Whether it's championships on the line or a day in the dirt with friends, professionals and enthusiasts depend on Kemetic. Kemetic Gaskets sealing championships since 1989. This week in Yamaha history. At the 2011 Rock Run GNCC, the field was poised for a great and fierce battle. North Carolina's Brian Cook had gotten off to the early lead, but a young champion by the name of Chris Borch, along with Adam McGill, Bill Ballance, Chris Bithel, and more, were waging war as the young XC2 Pro-Am prodigy Yamaha's Walker Fowler was in hot pursuit and aiming to claim his first ever overall victory. 
In the end, Walker Fowler bested the boys from the GNCC from back on row two and marked win number one of now over 50 overall wins, each one while riding aboard a Yamaha. And that's this week in Yamaha history. Hey, and, Johnny, were and, you at that race? I, I was. <laughs> and, and roughly 59 wins later. Wow. And, and six championships. Uh, Walker Fowler still still out there doing the job. Wasn't racing with us this weekend. Was actually in yeah. Texas doing a little hunting with the boys from Yamaha. That's, so, it's funny um, you say that. He had the opportunity to go out and do that. And, uh, you know, all of his sponsors. Jordan Ashburn on screen leading the way in XC1. Uh, and your overall Thad Duvall closing it up there in second. Stu Baylor still in third. And there is Ben Kelly in fourth. Oh, look at this. Hold on. Lane Man. Michael putting on a charge in that fifth place spot has closed all the way up, and that was the rider. I don't know if I ever finished the thought, but I said, "Oh, I oh, did." Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I said he has he has more laps around this track than any one of those top riders guaranteed. Not saying he's going to go out and work the boys, but he's making up ground right now. It's it's impressive, actually. Rodney and I talked even before we got to the track this morning. We were talking about Lane Michael today, and uh, he's one of those riders, kind of like Ashburn. He's had those glimpses of greatness for one, two hours and then kind of falls off in that third hour. Well, if he's going to make it happen, this is without a doubt the track uh, I think he can make it happen. Yeah, and I, I think we really saw in, in the last three, four races, we've seen Lane up in there later in the races. We've seen him, uh, you know, mixing it up. At, what was that, two rounds ago? Was, oh, the, was the it, crash on Pro Row. The whole yeah. way, the crash on Pro Row. Last race was up in there battling for a podium. You know, it's been, he's been so close this year. He's really just stepped it up to a whole new level. And, you know, he might be one of those guys that just needs that win, that monkey off his back. Not saying to go out and go on a run oh, and for win sure. 10, but, right. you know, where he's up there every week battling for those wins. What do you think it does to a guy, uh, not just Lane, but any kind of situation where you're kind of the guy in the pit and then a guy like Stu comes along and he starts seeing success. Would that? Do you think that would motivate a guy like Lane or does it kind of demoralize him? I, you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. It's I, I try to be as as honest and uh and forthcoming with with my feelings with airs our leader mike witkowski in xc2 second place for still right there that 198 machine um i had my doubts as to how that was going to work out yeah. for lane I i'll be honest um lane and, and i like lane he's a very close friend um but he isn't one that's been known for being mentally strong and i thought that there is okay so we'll talk about that xc2 championship battle <laughs> in a minute but lane isn't one that throughout his career has been known for being mentally strong phenomenal rider great talent great speed always fit but he seemed to be missing something yeah. to be able to continually put the pieces together i honestly thought when Stu came under the same tent it was going to knock lane off Implode. the rails yeah he did the exact opposite yep. he I struggled agree. a little bit at that race in west virginia the first round that Stu was there Stu won i think lane was maybe six seven mm -hmm. five six seven somewhere in there not that that's a struggle solid finish but since then he's been either in a podium position leading or battling every race yeah you know and, right. and, and i think he just he realized now's the time he needs to pull it together and i think on, on some level maybe there's that fact of hey it's the same bike it's the same team right. this guy's winning i know i'm as good as him i just need to do it and lane right now has been going out there and doing it he's he, he's been so much improved these last three rounds um it, it's been it's been crazy to watch and, and i think today could be a day we see lane michael on the podium or maybe even a win It'd be shocking. It, it'd, it'd be good. It'd that'd be, good. be a way to close out the season. Yeah. Ampro wouldn't be too mad about no, that. They'd be no. happy. I'm sure um, they'd be real pumped. Oh, one too. For sure. Whether it be Stu Lane or Lane yes, Stu, they'd, exactly. they'd be pumped for sure. And then throw Wachowski in that XC2, sure. and then you got a real good day. Yeah, but Speaking those, of that, those other guys don't want to let that happen. But um, We just broke that down during commercial break, uh, and I'm, I'm not even going to try to get through the weeds on that <laughs> Come on, like Mike, you did. You can but, explain it. So, all right. So, if I understand it, if Wachowski wins, he's got the championship. Uh, as well, long as correct. Craig DeLong finishes is fourth or back is that right okay so here's where uh, we're see, out. I already screwed no, up. no 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 you're good if if craig finishes where he is if they finish as they run mike wakowski would be your xc2 leader okay or your xc2 champion which right now they're running wakowski first yep and DeLong in fourth correct so they're running one four right now speaking of the top four there's your top four xc1 riders now five with lane michael in there top five on screen out in the fields and they still running order still the same that is uh out front jordan ashburn second place thad duvall third place Stu baylor fourth place <laughs> Ben Kelly and fifth place back there lurking on the 523 Ampro Yamaha Lane Michael uh, in that XC2 battle here's how it breaks down here's how it shapes up 
right now, leading the way, Mike Wachowski on the 282 Ampro Yamaha would be your champion if he wins the race and Craig DeLong finishes in fourth. There's a nine-point gap between them as they start the race. Okay. That would be a 12-point swing, meaning that Mike Wachowski would win the championship by three points. Now, here's where it gets interesting. If Craig DeLong would to finish in that third place spot, Mike Wachowski wins, they tie on points. There would be a tie. But wait, there's more. <laughs> but wait, there's more. The tiebreaker is number of wins. Right also now, tied. Mike Wachowski has uh, three. Yeah. And actually, or wait, is that, Let me look. Is Let that me backwards? Look. Let's, let's make I'll, sure I'll that is the out. case. Um, I believe Mike Wachowski has three, and Craig DeLong has four, unless that's You're correct. Craig DeLong has four wins on the year, and, and Wachowski has three okay. wins on the so year. So here's where it gets interesting. They would each have four wins, so they would tie on the tiebreaker. <laughs> then you go to last race, whoever finishes ahead in the last race. So Mike Wachowski, as they run, if Craig DeLong gets into that third place spot and Wachowski wins, Wikowski would win the championship based not on points. They would tie on points. Right. They would tie on wins. Mike Wikowski would win it on the second tiebreaker, which is last race. So the scenario for Wikowski is basically just go out and win. Don't win. worry about the rest. Win. If he wins, he can't control anything else. He needs either Barnes or um, the current second place yep. rider, uh, which why am I drawing a blank? Barnes is in third. Second place is uh, uh, Liam, Liam, Draper. Draper. Liam Draper. He needs one of those two guys to hold up not hold up, but to hold up under the pressure and finish second, because if Craig DeLong gets that second place position, it's over, or if he wins, it's over. So basically, Craig DeLong controls his own destiny if he finishes first or second. If he finishes third or worse, he needs Mike Wachowski not to win. <laughs> All right, folks at home, is that clear as mud? You it's got not, that? It's Some not. people are writing it down. We'll, I hear we'll somebody out we'll there. We'll keep you informed we throughout the you, day. We got you covered. Just Jordan remember, Ashburn. right now, the 127 Babbitt's <laughs> Energy Monster, uh, Babbitt's online Monster Energy Kawasaki leading the way. The 989 Rockstar Husqvarna of Thad Duvall in second. Stu Baylor, the 514 Ampro Yamaha in third. And they have shaken the 530 uh, KTM of Ben Kelly just by a little. Oh, is. look at that. Lane Michael into fourth in a round. Ben Kelly, Lane Michaels on the move, boys. Hey, just to clarify, uh, I heard you guys talking just a few moments ago. As far as wins this year in the XC2 class, Craig DeLong has four. Uh, Lane, uh, excuse me, uh, Mike Wachowski has three. And by the way, Johnny Gerard with five wins in the, on, on the championship season, but he's not here but today. He's, yeah. uh, that uh, crash that he had took him back to 11, took him out of the championship. But uh, yeah, guys, what a barn burner of a day we've got going already and so many scenarios. You guys keep going for just a minute. <laughs> I'm going to check these points and see. I'm going to try to figure out these scenarios so we don't have to guess it so much. So let me ask this. If you're Johnny Girard, are you sitting at home? Are you watching right now? Are you looking at live timing and scoring? Or are you saying, forget about it? Now, are I'm there any drops? In, are there in, there's no drops in the XC2. Okay. Now, that's uh, that's a tough one, man. I mean, I'm sure Johnny Girard is a fan of racing. Yeah. So he's going to want to know how his buddies are doing. Uh, but at the same time, he's got to feel like, you know, this was really his, um, you know, his, his, kind of golden ticket yeah. you know i mean he had he'd worked so hard all season he'd, oh, been, yeah. he'd been the most consistent rider you know he had five wins uh he was the most dominant rider especially early in the season you know he was just clicking off wins making it look easy um but you know mike wakowski and uh and Craig DeLong were just able to keep it consistent. They kept themselves there, and all it took was that one bad race for yeah. for Johnny. You know, he, he had that big crash, and they said he knocked himself silly, and then several more crashes while trying to just limp it to the finish line. And No um, one is questioning that dude's toughness. No. That is for dang sure. No, he's definitely tough. And, and that's one of those. Oh, look at this. New leader. Now, here's another scenario. Liam Draper leading. So Mike Wachowski is in a <laughs> must-win situation, and he is currently not winning. So right now, oh, look at this. Oh, okay. Okay, now they're all oh, one, oh, they're, two, three, four. They in tight. Yep, and, jo and uh, Jonathan Johnson there in the fifth place spot, not out of it by any means as well. So Craig DeLong now is kind of, as they run, Craig DeLong's in the driver's seat. He can see Wachowski, only two positions in front of, him, front of him. If he's doing math in his head, he knows that's three points plus four is seven. He's got a nine-point lead. He's good. <laughs>
You're good at this, Johnny. My goodness. Uh, I um, do, I do, the, my issue is I do too much math <laughs> while I'm riding and not enough twisting of the throttle. I, we did this earlier this season with the WXC class and Becca and the points uh, chase for that championship. During every race, if you walked by the finish line, I'd be like, Johnny, Johnny, real quick, real quick, <laughs> play this out for me. Um, but one of the other things, too, I mean, you got these guys that they want to go out there, they want to prove something, they want to end the season on a high note. I think if you're a guy like Liam Draper right now, I want to play spoiler. Sure. I know I'm not going to win the championship. Championship, but uh, I'm not happy about that. No. And uh, between the two guys that are competing for it, I'm going to spoil it for you. I'm going to be the bad guy. Well, and I don't think there's any loyalties amongst the top four or yeah. five as they run right now. I don't think Liam's going to pull over and let Mike by. But by the same token, I, I don't think Liam's out there blocking right. Mike, trying to hold him up. Bingo. I think he's trying to win a race. Um, I don't know of any plans. Obviously, Liam rides for a KTM support team, which is an extension of our KTM. Husky is an extension of KTM. Right. They're kind of all in the same camp. But I would highly doubt that there's any team orders for Liam to go out right. there and slow the pace yep. to allow Craig to catch up or anything like that. You know, and honestly, I think if it came down to it, Craig would fight, Liam would fight Craig in the last corner for that second place spot that he so badly needs, even if Mike Wachowski yep. was leading. He's not, no one's going to pull over and let these guys by. They're going to have to earn it is what right. it comes down to. And uh, right now, watching it on screen, that is your leader, Jordan Ashburn, second place. Actually, I'm sorry. That's Thad Duvall in second and Stu Baylor in third there as they drop off. That's a pretty steep little downhill there. And uh, we, we'll get to see it. Adam Gordon, our producer, pointed out there's a really, really gnarly little downhill um, that drops into a ditch with some rip rock in it uh, coming up. And, and this this is one of those times where the drone just doesn't do it justice <laughs> because it's essentially vertical. Um, it's straight down and uh, a gnarly drop. But so awesome to be able to see this racing action on screen. And we do think that is our second and third place riders. Now that looks to be, actually, we may have had a shake up there. Yeah, the bird's eye view stuff to tell. So, okay. Yep, so it, it is still Ashburn out front, Thad in second, and uh, Baylor in third. It almost looked like potentially, um, oh, look at this. Here's Here comes your XC2 leaders, a different leader this lap. Liam Draper leading the way. Out there rolling, Liam Draper. you got to feel good right now. This is probably going to sound like a silly question, but I heard a few folks talking about it yesterday was uh, the time, when obviously we're racing the same time, but the daylight savings time, it's November. Did sun play a factor yes. at all for you, you guys yesterday? Okay, question. yes. Bingo, that's what it, I thought. It was awful. Yeah. It was so hard to see, and I was talking to all the other guys, XC1 guys. I have never intentionally taken my goggles off during a race Woof. in my 116 years of racing <laughs> um, due to vision issues that were glare and light related. I yeah. uh, started the race like I have every race since the beginning of time with roll-offs and about four turns into the race I realized the glare from the film across the uh. lens. Um, so what I actually did was I, I um, pitched my goggles. It, had I thought of it, I should have just pulled all the film and, and gotten rid of it so and broke the film so that I had just the lens there. Yeah. But what I did is I, I managed to hold on to the goggles for one lap, pitched them in the pits, and screamed tear-offs as loud as I yeah. could. And then the next lap, when I stopped for fuel, they gave me a fresh set of tear-offs. I, I proceeded to rip all seven laminate tear-offs off in one turn. Oh so I had just goodness. bare goggles because, and, and even then, I really didn't want goggles. I could honestly see better without them yeah. uh, because obviously it, it takes away the glare. The issue was it was just dusty enough. There was just enough debris flying around that you really couldn't ride without goggles safely. So, yeah, it was a battle all day, and, and these guys will be battling the same. I, I, I just I know Cole Richardson talked about it yesterday on the podium, and, like, I thought it, I thought it was literally just me watching the race and not being able to see. Looks like Stu Baylor's gotten around Thad Duvall. There he is, Stu Baylor on the hunt, heading for the front, going after the 127 of Jordan Ashburn. <laughs> but uh, he has gotten his way around. There's that downhill right there. And that you, it's hard to see, but those guys are turning into that berm because if not, they would go, fall off the face of the earth into that rip rock ditch there um so baylor now into second and look at that lane michael charging up to the rear wheel of your third place rider thad duvall these guys both the, the guys in third and fourth right now are the guys that have the most experience at this track uh yeah, again never having raced a gncc here before uh these other guys are kind of flying blind but your third and fourth place riders have definitely raced here throughout the years so one of the things about Lane Michael that we talk about, we, we've talked about how great he starts a race, and then that two-hour mark starts to fall off. Maybe today he's uh, riding a little smarter. Instead of exerting all that energy early, he's like, okay, I know I can pace myself here. Maybe that's going to play well for him. Maybe he can pick up uh, you know, a position or two before this is said and done. Maybe he's got something left in the tank come that three-hour today. 
play, being back there in the middle of the pack of those XC1 guys. Well, and you know what, Rodney can can chime in on this, but one of our one of our jobs here in the Racer TV booth <laughs> is, is to speculate <laughs> and to, to build the hype. And, and this isn't all hype. There's some truth to it, Rodney. For many years, when Lane was coming up through the amateur ranks and the A classes, we would see him. You know, he'd have a few good rides here and there. Um, you know, and and was definitely a fast rider. But we would get to that Mason Town race. We right. would get to Snowshoe. We would get to places and that were in West Virginia. Super excel. And he would finish so far above par for his finishes. Um, you know, it was crazy. So he, this is like the meat and potatoes of what would be his backyard. And uh, he's right now putting on a charge. He's up to the back of Thad Duvall. Ben Kelly's still right there as well. And, I mean, the top five, you could throw a blanket over basically all of them. There's Baylor now wow. in second. There is Duvall in third, just behind him, the 523 of Lane Michael in fourth, and the 530 of Ben Kelly in fifth. Well, I tell you, uh, whether or not there's extra carrots out there to dangle or not, the one thing that we can point out about Lane is, is that we were seeing that uh, progression that we were hoping for in the early part of the season. Midway through the season, obviously, the injury came along, and, and now that he's been back, looks like Craig DeLong in for an MMI pit stop. I don't know if you noticed, but Johnny Campbell in the pits this weekend as well. Nice little story to talk about with that one here in just a few moments, but, uh, but uh, nonetheless... Uh, you know, just a lot of variables in this race, and, and we can see a lot of things uh, uh, change change the face of this one. But, uh, yeah, I got sidetracked there. seeing Johnny Campbell. I do want to uh, elaborate on that a little bit for you. Uh, Johnny down there helping the Phoenix Racing Honda team. I talked to Johnny, asked him what, uh, what's been going on as of lately, and uh, he said, you know, th things are doing well. Uh, he's going to, uh, you know, he's hanging out on the West Coast doing his West Coast thing, and he's overseeing things, and he's actually, uh, you know, got a pretty solid team over there, and I guess what he's going to be doing, he's going to be monitoring both the uh, West Coast and the East Coast team. So he's going to be offering some assistance and in, in, in helping them excel and get a little stronger in the, in the mechanic side of things as far as the off-road world is concerned there at Phoenix Racing. Very cool. You know, Johnny has a whole lot of experience. Um, he's He's been uh, an off-road guy with his... 863 Baja championships. And <laughs> I, I, seriously, no, I think it is 11 times that he's won the Baja 1000. And, um, you know, he's, he's just an absolute legend of, of off-road racing. Came out, actually had the JCR Honda team here yeah. for a number of years. And it was just... Uh, made more sense. Uh, Phoenix was, was wanting to do some uh, dirt bike team stuff. They already had their ATV team for Honda and uh, made more sense for them to uh, it was a better fit here for GNCC yeah. and, and Johnny was able to go back and focus on the West Coast. It was a good fit for Honda all around I think honestly yeah. And so after you know after a couple of years here uh, Johnny's had a little bit of changes out West. I don't especially this year I don't think they've been able to do as much racing um, so for him to be able to come out and, and lend some experience and a hand to those guys I'm sure it'll make the whole program even stronger of an already strong program and finishing my thought there just a moment ago on uh, Lane Michael is the fact that uh, you know now that he's back you know when we were talking about the incentive I mean he had the incentive to continue to build on what he was already building upon obviously uh, with Stu being back as uh, Stu being on the team now that's uh, another extra bit of incentive for him and uh, you know honestly uh, it seems like things are going pretty smooth in, in, in that transition I know that uh, I've talked with Randy Hawkins he has assured uh, Lane that uh, everything is fine he still is guy and he's going to be back and, and, and he and both Mike Wickhouse could be racing the XC1 and XC2 for him pro Yamaha next year. Yeah, each of those guys do have another year on their deal. Rodney, want to point this out? Look at this. He, Stu Baylor going for it in the Monster Mile. Not quite able to make the pass. Took that outside line there. But Baylor is on a charge and he wants the lead. He's going after Jordan Ashburn and he's right on the rear wheel. Wow, so uh, nice stuff going on there, and uh, Stu trying to take over that lead. Still very tightly knit here. Josh, uh, uh, excuse me, Jordan Ashburn, uh, Stu Baylor, Thad Duvall, Lane Michael back and forth, Ben Kelly in the uh, number five position. And, of course, speak of the devil, we were just talking about this guy just a second ago, uh, Johnny Campbell from uh, JCR Honda, Johnny Campbell Racing, and I guess American Honda now as well as we uh, welcome uh, Johnny back to GNCC. Man, good to see you back out here. Yeah, thanks, Rodney. It's uh... Uh, really great to be here, you know, especially when it's 75 degrees. I'll, I'll just claim I brought that here. Okay, we'll, you know? we'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, we first got our, our first winter storm in uh, California this weekend, so <laughs> it's colder there than here, surprisingly. Wow, that, that's that's nuts to, to think about that, but uh, no, it, it was a welcome change. I, I walked up into the Phoenix Honda Racing Pits this morning, and I was like, Who's that dude in the sunglasses over there? That looks like JC, man, and, and, and there you were, man. So uh, uh, I was like, what's up? And you told me that uh, there's a lot of cool things on the horizon. 
Yeah, we're really excited. You know, at Honda, there's, they're going through a, a pretty large corporate change right now. And, uh, you know, moving in the future for off-road racing, uh, my role, I guess you could say, has been elevated in a capacity in that uh, I'll be, you know, advising some of the other off-road teams uh, like Phoenix Racing and uh, SLR on the West Coast. And uh, so I think it'll be good. I mean, they can use my experience and, and support and, uh, you know, whether it's bike development, you know, just being Oh, we got a pass for the lead. Sorry about that, Johnny, but just got the the word there. Stu Baylor has made the pass on the 127 of Jordan Ashburn and Johnny Gallagher. Uh, I tell you, I hate to get – oh, good. Caught you just before that. But, uh, man, this – he like you said, he has been in this. He, he was trying to make that strike over there in the Monster Mild. Uh, great uh, opportunity for him to try out there with those option lines. It, it kind of failed for him, but he found another one out there. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and Stu's it looking, looking like he was getting racy there for the last couple miles. Um, you know, Ashburn held on the lead there for two laps, and uh, Stu is just starting to look like he was getting a little antsy back there in that third place spot. We saw him make the move, get into second, got around Duvall, and now he's taken over the lead, and here is your leader in XC2. Liam Draper leading the way, Mike Wachowski still in second, and it looks like, oh, no, Cody Barnes took that out. Oh, no, Craig DeLong has gotten into third. So as they run right now, uh, and another shakeup there in fourth and fifth, looks like Jonathan Johnson has actually gotten around Cody Barnes. So there is your top five in XC2, and as they run, We'll keep out updating it. Craig DeLong would be your championship winner. As right now, if, if uh, Witkowski is to finish second place, Craig DeLong will have to finish fifth. Might tie it up. Might put it in a tie situation. Sixth would definitely win it for him. But uh, uh, Johnny Campbell, man, what do you think about this? I know when you left, we had some really good racing and everything. But wow, the depth of uh, talent, the ferocity in this XC1 Pro class and the XC2 Pro class is, is just off the scale these, these days. Yeah, it's amazing uh, just to see the difference. You know, I, this is my first GNCC back in about two years, I think. And, uh, you know, to see how the talent coming up is, is pretty amazing. But, uh, yeah, the fight in XE1 has is, is just been, you know, such a great thing to watch all season. And, you know, especially being able to get the 13 rounds we got. <laughs> yeah. That's that, that that is amazing in and of itself right there being able to get to that full 13. So you're going to be spending a lot of time with us next year. We're going to see you a lot next year in the Phoenix Honda Racing Pits. Yeah, you'll see me a lot lot more frequently than uh, you know this year. Of course, this year's been a weird year for everybody. Right. But uh, yeah, the yeah the plan is uh, just to uh, you know come back and support the team when when it's necessary. Well, that's awesome, man. We're glad to have you back and glad to see you back here in the GNCC Racing Nation. Welcome back, Johnny Campbell. And, of course, uh, American Honda building strong here in the GNCC Racing Nation. We have got a man on the move. Baylor has moved up to first place from third here on this uh, third lap of racing. And he is man on a mission. What's going to happen behind him? And how is this one going to play out? Stick around. The finale here in West Virginia. The Buckwheat 100 returns on GNCC Live right after this. It's hard to put our adventures on hold, but now is the perfect time to prepare for their return. Amsoil has your back with fast, free shipping and ordering has never been easier. Just look up your vehicle Select your product, add an oil change to your cart, and check out. Spend $50 on Amsoil products, and shipping is on us. Order now at Amsoil.com. Even when you're the best, you never stop striving to be better. With over 40 years of experience in motorcycle sales and service, we know racing. Our inventory of Yamaha motorcycles, sport bikes, dirt bikes, ATVs, and side-by-sides is extensive and constantly changing. Stop by Lojack Cycle Sales today in Tarentum, Pennsylvania, and visit our online inventory at www.lojacks.com. Yamaha YZs. It's why we ride. Hi, my name is Andrea Lee.
Doug Whitmer, Coastal Racing uh, Team uh, Mechanic for my two boys. Uh, Cole Whitmer, number 44, and Lane Whitmer was a youth rider. Now to, uh, this weekend's a first weekend on a big bike, number 587. I started mechanicing for Barry Hawk in 1996, and uh, I went from 96 to 2010 with Barry when he retired. But I actually started the GNCC series racing in 1986. Uh, Big Bear was my first race. So I raced uh, four wheelers from 86 to probably 93. And then I switched to bikes, um, had some knee injuries and things like that. And then I started working for Barry. So I wouldn't be afraid to say I'm one of the oldest guys around here or at least has been in the GNCC series for uh, you know one of the one of the longest times I can tell you that maybe Mike Holbert might have me beat um, you know this is the last race for us on Huskies um, it's publicized everybody knows we're going to gas gas next year and um, a lot of the same riders we got a few maybe new riders um, and I think everybody's fired up about it so you know, we'd like to end, uh, end this weekend on a good note. And welcome back to GNCC Live here on RacerTV.com. Rodney Tomlin along with uh, Johnny Gallagher and, of course, our cohort, Mr. Mikey Wayne's out and about. He'll be giving us some updates. And as you look on uh, the TV screen right now, you might see a very compelling video that was released uh, earlier, well, just a few days ago. Uh, it's the Stu Baylor story on um, what took place from, uh, well, basically March until now. And the story, you've heard bits, you've heard rumors, you may even know the truth, but to know it as deep as what this truth is right here is unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely uh, pretty wild to watch. Uh, I'd kind of known a lot of what went on behind the scenes. We all, it was very well publicized, his split with, uh, with Shirko, you know, his recovery from infection. But to actually see um, some cell phone video footage taken when they were as they were driving him to the uh, the hospital when he had that infection, um, you know, a lot of things, uh, a lot of things you can kind of uh, I don't know you can kind of fake. But anybody that questions how severe Stu Baylor's pain and infection was, if you hear the the, yeah. the pure panic in his voice, that's not staged. No. Um, and what he came back from and what he came through, you know, it's an inspiration to us all. Yep. So, uh, they're, they're, yeah, obviously very compelling. Uh, you know, I mean, the uh, just a, a three day stretch in his life, man, that, you know, I mean, it was just one one uh, takedown after another, you know, and to, to see. I mean, that was about as low as, as you can go. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot lower that you can go, but that's about as low as you can go in a professional career like that. And then to bounce back like he has has been remarkable, no doubt. So check that out. Uh, you can find it across the. Uh, uh, you, can go to, you can go to Stu's Instagram, and there's a link there that'll take you to the YouTube video, or you can search, search Stu Baylor 2020 on YouTube. Either one of those should get you to the right yeah, spot. Yeah, without any problem, man. And uh, again, it's a must-see video, uh, no doubt about it. Uh, you, you will certainly get a little better look into what uh, Stu Baylor's heart is like, you know what I mean, as far as his passion for, for racing, there's no doubt. Uh, waiting on the leaders here uh, at... Or, they, they've actually come through. Oh, have they come yep. through? Okay. They, the running order was basically still the same. Uh, obviously, we know that what we see on screen is not the actual running order. It is Stu Baylor leading the way. Uh, Jordan Ashburn second, Thad Duvall third, uh, Lane Michael in fourth, Ben Kelly fifth, Andrew DeLong sixth. Uh, it did appear from what I saw on screen, uh, it did appear that Josh Strang had worked his way around uh, Grant Baylor and was on the rear wheel of Trevor Bollinger, but we'll see how that evolves once they come into. Uh, hey, finish. we sh we need Christopher Eddy. Christopher Eddy, if you are know the whereabouts of Christopher Eddy, we need him to report to the medic station, please. Christopher Eddy to the medic station. The pit crew, the pit crew of uh, Christopher Eddy. Sorry about that. The pit crew of Christopher Eddy to the medic station. So uh, with that, uh, Johnny, yeah, man, I mean, uh, the, the, ground, the, the groundwork is laid here in this uh, first hour of racing. We're due in for uh, lap two complete in a little over uh, six minutes, about six and a half minutes or so. Riders are running in the uh, 26, uh, or started out in that 26 and a half uh, minute mark. Uh, I will look at uh, the lap times from that previous lap. Uh, Ashburn had a 26.31, Duvall a 26. 
26-30. It was a 26-24 for Stu Baylor, but Lane Michael had a 26-17. So we're seeing that he's got some speed and he's been able to make up some time, at least uh, there on lap number two. We'll see how lap three has been carrying for him so far. Yeah, it seems from what we saw on screen when they last checked in, now there is your XC2 leader, Liam Draper, second place, Mike Wachowski, and they have now pulled out a little bit of ground over this guy right here, the 342 of Craig DeLong, followed closely by Jonathan Johnson, and off in the distance there now coming in is the 99 on that factory beta of Cody Barnes. So there is your top five that close together in XC2. And again, that's a close one to watch today. We need to keep an eye on it because that is deciding your 2020 GNCC XC2 overall champion. And what a yo-yo of a year. What a battle of a year for the championship in that one. There's no doubt a lot of uh, highs and a lot of lows for, for several different riders in the battle for that championship, that's for sure. Looks like we may have our leaders on screen here on our Yamaha Racing Sky Cam. Looks like it is still Baylor out front, Ashburn in second, and I think that's still Duvall in third, hard to tell. Um, Yep, that is. So there's your top three, and that's just how close they are. So that answers the question, was Stu Baylor able to run and hide? Nope. Jordan Ashburn was able to latch onto that pace, and he's sitting right there, kind of ish, on the rear wheel. Uh, close as you can get in these particular sections. Oh, look at that. Little mistake from Baylor, uh, and allows Ashburn to close that gap up just a little bit. Thad Duvall looking solid there in third, and a little bit a little bit of a gap back to our fourth place rider, which could be either, as we last knew, it was Lane Michael or perhaps Ben Kelly. Those two were pretty much wheeled wheel when we saw him last. A little lapped rider. We'll see if it has any problems. No problems for Stu Baylor there as he is laying down the law out here. You know, uh, like you said, you know, he, he's not running away from these guys right now. But uh, the big question is, you know, uh, what is he pushing with right now? Has he just pushed to get to the front? And now he's just kind of, all right, guys, ride with me if you can. And going to ease it on a little at a time. Uh, you know, that third hour has been the hour that uh, so many riders have struggled with, even Stu Baylor throughout his career. And he's figured out, it seems like anyway, figured out what that third hour is all about and, and how to put it all together for the one, two, and three. And uh, I, honestly, it seems like there's no change in his pace. I mean, it, it's, it, it's an intense pace. It is uh, uh, full throttle, uh, ice forward the entire three hours of racing. Well, you know, and it's interesting. Stu Baylor has been very candid about the changes that he's made, um, not necessarily in how he prepares physically. He hasn't really talked about his training. You know, Stu, Stu loves to tell people that he just goes home and, <laughs> and drink bush lattes and and uh you know he's, he loves to cook that part is true so he's, he's an eater that's why he's not a small man but uh Stu trains a lot doesn't talk about that much but the one thing that i've really been shocked that he was so almost eager to share with everyone was his mental mindset change that he made that he feels is really making the difference for him and he said he went home he watched the races he watched the way caleb russell basically dissected his competition and didn't race the track he raced the riders right. he said I, I don't ride the races the way i want to or the way I think I need to win anymore said it's not about me winning it's about me beating my competitors and that's that's in his mind he's that has made the difference for him um, and sometimes that's all it takes is that mental confidence he, and he, if you simplify it like that 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 is the case because you're not putting as much pressure on yourself I got to win I got to win you, you're saying I got to beat my competitor and you know that you're, you're getting the whole win thing out it's just that one-on-one -on -one competition that you're going with not the whole dramatics of everything that comes along with the win. Yep, and, and I can tell you firsthand from spending some time around Caleb, you know, Caleb was very, um, you know, focused on himself in terms of his preparation, but when it came to race day, he would say things, he never came right out and said the way Stu has, like, I'm just out here to beat those guys, but he would say things about the riders he would race, was racing with. There is fourth and fifth, and we are, we were correct about that. Ben Kelly back around Lane Michael, so Lane Michael back to fifth, Ben Kelly up to fourth, but those guys still very much in touch with the lead group so your top five all still battling over over who's going to be the one to raise the uh the trophy here from the buckwheat 100 above their heads in, in just a short amount of time there's your leader Stu baylor jordan ashburn right behind him got held up just a little bit by that lapper and this is one of those times where you know uh ashburn really is in kind of the better position here Stu baylor's the first rider to come up on these lappers uh this track is is very technical in that you know, you got to kind of pick your line ahead of time. It's more difficult to change lines, you know, mid straightaway or mid corner. Um, so if Stu gets in the wrong line and a lapper moves over on him, you know, it, it's it's continuing to keep that gap closer. Where before, he had the advantage of being the guy behind. You see Stu taking a different line there yeah. and pulling away just a tiny little bit from Ashburn. So Ashburn will have to kind of watch and, and check out those lines and go with Stu when he makes those quick 
quick directional changes. Wow. Just watching the way that these guys are carving through these woods right now is just so impressive. And I, I remember making these same statements when we saw this uh, kind of uh, footage that we saw back in Georgia uh, 1 at the uh, General GNCC. Co coincidentally, before the fo foliage was all up. <laughs> exactly. So now afterwards, wow, this is just, uh, uh, just so great to see. Yeah, and uh, I know uh, just looking for greater and bigger things as uh, we continue here at Racer TV and this kind of coverage in the future as well. But again, you know, afforded this luxury uh, because of uh, no leaves on the trees. But yeah, um, this is this is going to be a good one. And you know, one of the statements, just going back one last time, uh, alluding to what uh, Stu Baylor was talking about and, and talked about in, in, in the video, but probably one of the most impressive statements that he made throughout that entire video is he says, I want to win so much that I don't appreciate it anymore. That is that statement carried so much weight with me from that video. Yeah, and, and that's a mindset. You know, some people would, would listen to that and say that's arrogance. Some people would listen to it and say that's, you know, unappreciative for the position he's in. But it's all about his mindset. And if his mindset is that he wants, he, what he actually said, as you said, was I want the wins to be coming so easy that I don't appreciate them, but I want to appreciate the work. I want to appreciate the journey that mm -hmm. I put in to win those races, but not the wins themselves. And honestly, those first three looked kind of easy. Yeah. You know, but in the ever evolving world of GNCC, <laughs> those guys that battled him at the last race and ultimately taking away the win, Josh Strang, you know, they have no interest in making it easy on Stu Baylor. Now, is that again the leader? That was with Kalski. Yep. And he yep. has gotten around. There's Draper. Yeah. So. As they run right now, Craig DeLong in third. Game set and not quite yet match not yet. from Mike Wachowski. It, so this is a chess match. That's what we're watching. Yep, so it, it's going to be a tough one for him, no doubt. Uh, right now, uh, Baylor checking in for three laps complete. Jordan Ashburn, four seconds back on the clock. Ben Kelly, another five seconds back in the number three spot. Lane Michael, close in tow, only three seconds behind Ben Kelly. And guess what? Six seconds behind that, the 989 of Bad Bad Duval. That's your top five checking in so far, and the, so far those are the only five riders to check in with three laps of racing complete. Last time around, Andrew DeLong was only eight and a half seconds behind that fifth place ride, so that's starting to open up. And in talking with uh, Grant Baylor back there in that seventh place position, he was another 20 seconds back. But talked to him this morning. I said, "Hey, buddy, how's it going?" He said, "Man, I'm nervous." And I said, nervous? What are you nervous about? So what's he said? Oh, he says, I, I just, he goes, I just want to make sure that I have a good ride today and I get out of here safe. He says, I got the national championship next oh, race right. next week yeah. for the National Enduro Series. That's something I can tell he wants that really bad, yeah. Johnny. So uh, Yeah, he's chased that national enduro title for years. His brother Stu's won it twice. Um, so he's in the driver's seat for that one. So couldn't, couldn't really blame him if he's kind of riding a little on the cautious side this weekend. Not really in any major points battles for, for top three. Right here in the GNCC so uh, you know he's just kind of yeah, it's still riding very, very fast out there, no question. Oh, yeah. But, but trying to maybe not take those chances. I think we're going to see maybe probably relax a little bit as we see Josh Strang checking in now in the number six spot, 52 seconds back. I'm not sure what's happened there. Maybe we can get a word in from Mikey Waynes here in just a little bit. Trevor Bollinger, the 739 machine, back in that uh, number seven spot. And Andrew DeLong now has checked in in the eighth place position. There is Grant Baylor in the ninth place position. So there's those changes. We should be seeing Mike Wachowski and Liam Draper coming near the finish line here pretty soon as well. And uh, interesting, you know, you had pointed out uh, Andrew DeLong was only eight seconds back there last lap. He did stop this previous lap. No one else stopped fuel. He was the only rider that stopped in the VP fuels per row. So that probably let him fall back into the clutches of Josh Strang, Trevor Bollinger, all those guys that were there right behind him and ultimately dropped him back from six to eight. Uh, but he is still there close. Uh, and he, he was actually ahead of Strang when we saw him on camera at the seven. So he's, he's uh, hopefully able to latch on there and maybe those guys can push themselves and 52 seconds is, is not a, a gap that's too far for a man like Josh Strang to bring. He can put himself back up in the battle for a top five. Mikey Wayne's down in the pits. What's going on, Mikey? Hey, guys. Uh, just want to let you know, there are obviously uh, riders getting ready to come in for the pit stops, fuel this, that, and the other. Babbitt's online Kawasaki pits look like they're preparing for a little bit more. Uh, not sure what's going on, but uh, might be something a little extra for the Ashburn pits. So we got our camera guy down there. We'll keep you informed. All right. Thanks a lot. Mikey Waynes uh, down in the VP Fuels Pro Row. 
preparing for the MMI pit stop coming up here for our XC1 Pro Class. Rodney, if you want to go ahead and refresh that screen, our XC2 top four, maybe top five by now have checked in. We saw the top four on screen. Things are heating up. And out front, the 282 Ampro Yamaha, Mike Wachowski doing what he needs to do. And right now, he's doing it just enough. Right behind, uh, he's actually stretched it out just a few seconds over Liam Draper. But right behind Liam Draper is a very, very hungry Craig DeLong, knowing that the position he's in is not enough to get it done. He needs to get around Draper if he wants to lock up that 2020 XC2 title. Well, that, that's for sure. So he's going to be riding for that. And you have to know that both DeLong and Wachowski are riding with the weight of the world on their shoulders right now. Wyskowski's doing everything that he could possibly do, and that's right now win, and he's got to be in that position at the end in order to even think or dream about a championship unless something uh, drastic happens to uh, Craig along the 342 machine. So, and, and right now, uh, doing the math, or would we be at a tie situation here in third? Is that how that would work? Or yeah, as we, were, as we were talking before, you were out of the booth. So as they run right now, Craig DeLong would win the championship. Or I'm sorry, Mike Wachowski would win the championship. They would tie on points. They would tie on wins. It would go to the second tiebreaker, which would be who finishes ahead of who in the last race, meaning your overall, your, I'm sorry, not your overall, your XC2 champion as they run right now would be Mike Wachowski tying on points, tying on wins, the tiebreaker would come down to who finishes ahead of who in the last race, the best finish in the last race. That's as they run now. So basically, Craig DeLong still controls his own destiny, doesn't even have to pass Mike Wachowski, but he does have to pass Liam Draper to get to that second place spot. Yep, wow, that is that is tight. That is very tight right there. So exactly, that's gonna be uh, one to watch for sure as uh, we roll through this. And we haven't even reached the halfway point. We're still 10 minutes out from the hour 30 mark. Here comes your leaders into VP Fuels Pro Row. And I tell you what, Ben Kelly has whipped it up and is now all over the back of well, he actually just passed Jordan Ashburn there in the pits. Yeah, and uh, I believe their pits are a little farther down. It looks like Ben Kelly does pull into the pits right now as I'm watching out the uh, front of the studio here. And it uh, looks like uh, Ashburn is out of the pits, and he will get back around. It looks like Ben Kelly there, so that should... Uh, but look at that. All three of them in the same yeah. shot. Stu Baylor leading, Jordan Ashburn second, and Ben Kelly third, all in the same shot, all wow. in the same corner. Yeah, this is this is tight, friends. This is very, very tight. Uh, again, approaching the halfway point of this race right now. Lane Michael was another three seconds behind. Uh, not sure how he fared out of the uh, pit stops coming out of there just a moment ago. We didn't see him in that particular shot, but uh, don't be surprised that just a little further back behind this, uh, ooh. Rodney, let's watch this section right here. There is Lane Michael. Looks like he went down. Yes, see that? Yep, oh, yep. he's got, they're adjusting some stuff on the right-hand side. He went down in the mud, and that's where he lost that time. Yeah. Uh, uh, it looks like he went down real deep in the mud. Yeah, way deep. I, I didn't even know there was that much mud out there anywhere, to be honest with you, and a heartbreaker for him. But uh, now is the chance to see what he does after this. New second place rider. I thought I was watching the pass take place whenever we were watching uh, just before as the, the shot yep. faded away, it looked like the pass was being made. And that's an interesting section through there because there's so many lines and they all crisscross each other. So I was actually getting ready to say, watch these guys through here. Uh, and this is where actually Stu Baylor had a line last lap yeah. that he was able to pull away a little bit from Jordan Ashburn. Not quite here, but coming up soon. Looks like Ben Kelly had a nice little nip tuck line there. He was able to make up a few bike lengths on Stu. So there is Stu, the lead rider you see on screen. Second place, Ben Kelly. Third place, Jordan Ashburn. And all three of them just wheel to wheel. Well, I'll tell you right now, if there is one rider on the racetrack that may be in Stu Baylor's head, it might be the 530 of Ben Kelly who is behind him. And knowing the story and the history of uh, the KTM ride for uh, Stu Baylor and knowing that, of course, uh, Ben Kelly got a ride that maybe uh, Stu Baylor felt uh, he might have been his by air apparency. But uh, regardless, uh, you know, he's got points to prove out there. And uh, not only does he want to win, but uh, he certainly wants to beat Ben Kelly uh, as much, uh, you know, from a pro 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 professional standpoint as a personal standpoint on this one, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, and these two guys, as we pointed out earlier in the show, these the two guys that have kind of, uh, since we came back from break, they've been the cream of the crop. Yeah. Um, you know, Stu Baylor winning three races, finishing second in the only other race he didn't win. Uh, ben Kelly has been the guy that battled Stu Baylor for several of those wins uh, right down to the end. We saw at the, at the uh, Mason Dixon GNCC, heck, that one came down to the final corner with, you know, Ben trying to tuck under Stu, not quite being able to make the pass and settling for 
for second. Second also at the Mountaineer. Um, and he's been on the podium all those races. Mike Wachowski starting to now really stretch it out over yeah. Liam Draper. When I say really stretch it out, it's not all that much of a time or distance. It looks like maybe <laughs> we're looking at 10, 12 seconds. But that's huge compared to the fact that before they've all been just wheel to wheel. And here is second place Draper starting to look like he's fumbling with his lines a little bit. And that guy behind him right there is, oh, that was actually Cody Barnes. So yeah. Barnes has gotten around DeLong. Did, did maybe DeLong get around? Because there was a big gap that had opened up between first and second there. Maybe DeLong got around for second. We'll, we'll... I think DeLong was the next rider that came through on screen. It was oh. hard to tell with that sun glare, but um, we'll have to... Uh, it looks like some of those guys were in the VP Fuels Pro Row, and I'm looking. It Wick looks like Mark. Wikowski in, in and out of the pits. DeLong just left. I believe he's now in third. Looks like Cody Barnes got around him okay. while DeLong was in the pits. So, so now DeLong back to fourth because second place was actually Liam Draper. Draper went through there as well. Yeah. So unless Draper had a long fuel stop, now Craig DeLong is back to that fourth place spot and has to work his way back around Cody Barnes and try to get up to the back of the number 198 Liam Draper to make that pass. So the drama <laughs> runs deep in that XC2 championship battle. Mike Wachowski out front stretching out that gap. Looked to be maybe 12, 15 seconds. By far the biggest gap we've seen on those guys all day. Man, I look back at this season. There's no way you could have scripted this championship in 2020. There's no way you could have scripted 2020 in any way, shape, or form. And for it to come out like this, I mean, spectacular. I mean, what better way to finish a, a, a championship season than with a barn burner like what we've got going on right now? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and if you're going to have a, a season that's so back and forth, and, and when we talk about, you know, Johnny Dreyer obviously not here racing with us today, super unfortunate situation there, but as much as he kind of controlled this one uh, here as of late, you know, it was back and forth throughout the season, as we talked about, you know, Craig DeLong has three wins, or four wins, Mike Bukowski has three, uh, Johnny Dreyer had six, or five, look at this, oh, wow. and there's a pass. Whoa. What just lap, happened right lap there? Lapped riders. Yeah, lapped riders. I got confused. I don't know what happened there. I know there was it looked like a pass that took place there, but I'm not sure if it was the lapped rider or if it was uh, one of the... Uh, no, that, that was a pass for position, and I believe that may have been uh, that may have been Jordan Ashburn getting back around Ben Kelly because uh, it did not look like Stu Baylor, but as soon as we can find them on screen and kind of identify some colors, we'll, uh, we'll see if we can find out, but I believe... Well, there, there are the two riders, I think, that, that swap positions right there that we're looking at right now. Is there anyone out ahead of that is the question that, that I'm trying to answer myself. Yep, I see him just ahead. So I think that might still be Stu out there, and he may have gained a little bit of space between those two in that little transaction. Yeah, the left riders there were uh, really, really worked into the favor of, we believe, Jordan Ashburn moving back into that second-place spot, at least what it looked like here from the Yamaha Racing Skycam. And I can tell you, we're going to see that shake up about 15 more times <laughs> before this one's over, if not more. These guys are just absolutely laying it down, Rodney. Wow, man. You, it, that, I, you, you, like I said, couldn't have scripted it. And if you were thinking, man, I don't know that I even want to go to that last round. What are we going to be looking for? This is what you want to come for. There's Mike Wikowski making his way through the monster mile here at the four-mile marker. And now it's when we get a really good look at what this gap is starting to look like. 126.47 as he entered into the woods there. So we'll see what that gap is to the second place rider. Last we knew that second place rider was the number 198 of Liam Draper, followed by the 99 of Cody Barnes, followed closely, very closely by Craig DeLong, and they are still in that order as they come in here. Yeah. Uh, oh, look at this. Jonathan Johnson now up into the third place spot. So look at this. Craig DeLong back to fifth. Whoa. Now. So he's got to now pass three riders to get himself into position to win that XC2 title. Running back in that fifth place spot and he needs to get to second if Mike Wachowski wins this race. I would almost have to think that that might be pitting strategies that we've got going on there to be honest with you. So if that's the case then we might have to see those guys pit here in the coming laps. So that could change things up. It could maybe work back into the favor of Craig DeLong but how much damage will be done by the time that that happens. And how's that the XC2 class going to pan out? How is this XC1 class going to pan out? It is still so up in the air. Do not go anywhere. Stick around. GNCC Live continues after this. When you crave the canyon passes, rocky trails, rutted tracks, the podiums and personal records, it becomes part of you. The choice now is 
Do you become a wanderer or the wanderer? You just need to ride where you belong. It's GNCC's top five moments of 2020 as we wrap up this 13-round championship. In moment number five, Ben Kelly's solid season. Johnny Gallagher, you take a look back at that one. Since he's made his return back to GNCC Racing, I think he may have finished off the podium twice. His worst finish so far has been a fourth. He's got a bunch of seconds, some thirds, and a couple of fourth-place finishes. So what a solid season we've seen Ben Kelly put together. And a rightful reason for Stu Baylor to be worried about him as far as this and other riders as far as the upcoming 2021 championship is concerned. No question. Everybody thought Ben Kelly was the guy to watch coming into the season. Injury took him out early, but he was able to rebound since coming back from injury, and he's been right there every race. Moment number four in our top five moments of 2020. The XC2 battle down to the wire, the one that we've been keeping an eye on. Obviously, we had that three-man shootout going down, and then the unfortunate incident for Johnny G at the Ironman GNCC, taking him out of this round. But wow, it has uh, certainly left a lot on the plate as far as uh, two champions, two riders going for that championship. Yeah, I mean, three riders, last race battling, and they're all three of them were on screen, along with Lyndon Snodgrass, who actually isn't racing with us this weekend, it seems. Um, but Wachowski, now in the driver's seat, obviously we know Johnny Girard, unfortunately, sitting at home watching this one or maybe not watching this one but uh, Craig DeLong and Mike Rakowski still put it out there trying to decide this one moment number three of 2020 Josh Strang taking two overall wins and doing it in quite spectacular fashion. Not that he went out and he just did it. Josh went out and took those wins. He did it with fire and pressure coming in from, well, Caleb Russell the first time around. And the second time around that he took the win, he did it with, guess who, right on his rear wheel. And that was the man on the roll talking about Stu Baylor. We've definitely seen a resurgence in Josh Strang in 2020. We started to see it last uh, last year, obviously having a solid season, grabbing some podiums. But this year, he's just been on a whole nother level. He was the closest competitor to Caleb Russell all year long, the last man standing in that championship fight. And then to be able to put the icing on the cake twice with two wins and still not done here yet today, he's charging. We might see him up front. So it's been a uh, phenomenal season for Josh Strang. And there's the straight arm long four he's known for on the podium. <laughs> Moment number two of 2020. It's Stu Baylor's crazy season, and I'll tell you, this, you know, he, he had the amazing Circo ride, obviously. He had the lead in this one coming right down to the wire. Ends up going wide. Caleb Russell gets around, steals that win at the very end of that one, and what a heartbreaker. And, of course, we know the story, and if you watch the video, you'll know even deeper on the story. Uh, the COVID hit, the surgery, the infection, uh, the loss of his ride, and then, of course, the craziness that took place throughout the summer, the scrambling that took place, and he ends up on a Yamaha ride with doing that, getting that just days before returning back from the summer break. And coming back, winning three straight, finishing a very close second in the fourth race, and out there leading again today. Stu Baylor has just been absolutely on rails these last five races, and uh, you, you, it would be hard not to put him at the very forefront of your championship contenders for 2021. No doubt about that. So a remarkable season. It's been crazy, but it's been crazy good. And our number one moment of 2020, Caleb Russell taking his eighth national championship and, of course, 67 total overall wins when it's all said and done. Uh, definitely one of the greatest uh, GNCC racers of all time. Hands down, no question about it. You look at the day, the time, the era, the struggles the that in the mountains that he climbed throughout this season and for those eight championship remarkable okay <clears throat> no question Rodney you know Caleb Russell has elevated the game of GNCC racing uh, hard to hard to argue the fact that at this point in time he's the greatest GNCC dirt bike rider of all time uh, he has won six championships and been so dominant and so such a force in those years so, yeah six <laughs> uh, yeah. Eight, 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 eight my bad all right. Uh, I believe Mikey Wayne's down with uh, Rachel Goodish, our morning uh, WXE winner. Yeah, hey, thanks, Rodney. Down here at the uh, the Beta Racing Pits, and uh, Rachel Goodish, man, you've had some podiums this season, uh, but today finally got the job done, took your first pro win. Uh, what did it take to take the win here today in the WXC? So the big thing for me today, I think, was just race strategy. Am I live? Okay. The 
big thing for me, I think, today was race strategy. In the past, I've always had trouble whenever I get into the lappers, so I decided just first lap, I'm going to charge as hard as I can, try and build up the biggest gap I can. That way, if I have problems later on, I have a bit of a cushion to work with. And overall, I think it paid off pretty well. I mean, I finally got the win, so. You got the win. You got the whole shot as well, uh, courtesy of Trail Jesters. Another $100 on top of that. Uh, Rachel, what kind of momentum do you feel like this gives you moving into 2021? Well, it's definitely good to end the season on a high note, especially a season that's been as uh, strange as 2020 has been. So it's nice that we had, at least for me, I had something good come out of it, and I can go into the season. Like, I'm obviously motivated to work hard. That Always hungry. That never changes. But it's just... It's like I've got a weight off my shoulders. Like now that I've finally done it, I think it's going to be easier in the future. And then something I did want to say, like I've been doing this nine years now, and it's crazy to see how big of a difference there is in women's racing at this point. Like if I could have teleported five or six years ago, I would be annihilating everyone. The speeds have just increased so much with Maria coming from the West Coast and then Casey and then Taylor and now like Rachel Archer and everybody coming up. It's just, it's incredible to see. You know, we're not all on one row anymore. It's not everybody from Maria to Claudia to myself and my 105 lined up on the same row anymore. We got three classes, a whole group of girls racing. It's just, it's nice to see the sport advancing the way it is. And it's nice to be able to say I'm up near the top of that. Well, big congratulations to you, Rachel. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Congratulations on the win. Looking forward to seeing what you do in 2021. Thanks again, guys. Thank you. Back to you, Rodney. All right, thanks a lot, Mikey. Congratulations, Rachel. And, of course, uh, big uh, big day for her, no doubt about it. We've been seeing her get a lot of hole shots this season, and to be able to seal the deal on the uh, 2020 season with a win like that, uh, certainly a, uh, a great uh, a great feeling for her, no doubt about it. Well, as we said, it's been a crazy one, and as uh, Johnny Gallagher said there just a moment ago before he stepped out, this has been a barn burner, especially in that XC2 class, the 250 Pro class. That's, that's been intense to watch, and the yo-yo effect that, uh, of course, Craig DeLong has been going through, I think, dropping back uh, maybe to at least fifth place position now uh, after those last pit stops and running uh, at one point in that third place position. Mike Witkowski at last check in that class was leading and so far seems to be in control of the championship as he headed into this round again with a nine-point deficit. Uh, meanwhile, up front in the overall, uh, Stu Baylor, uh, Jordan Ashburn, Ben Kelly have really been swapping things up. They've been kind of tight and nose to tail. Uh, Ashburn and Kelly really battling and waging war for that second place position. We saw some uh, crazy transitions out there. Uh, they got mixed up with a bunch of lap riders. I think we saw a pass and there's another pass back. So we'll see uh, where we are here in, in just a few moments. But I believe we still got Stu Baylor out front. Ashburn and Kelly still battling for the number two and three spots. Uh, Lane Michael in fourth. Uh, Thad Duvall still back in the number five position. But as Johnny Gallagher pointed out a few moments ago, uh, back there in the sixth place position now is Josh Strang. Uh, Strang turning a, a pretty good clip as far as lap times are concerned, and if he can get a little more incentive on him, he might be able to bridge some of that gap and uh, really move closer towards that top five position. Whenever he gets to that top five position, in theory, he's kind of close to the front of the pack and maybe even a podium position finish. Uh, the top uh, five, when they checked in, he had four seconds between first and second, five seconds back to the number three spot, another three seconds back to the fourth place position, and Thad Duvall, was uh, only six seconds back. Um, so we're thinking this might be Stu out front here and maybe Ben Kelly now in that number two position as we pick the riders up out here near the eight mile marker and rounding the big pond out here. So yeah, I believe you're right, Adam. Uh, Adam, uh, our producer saying uh, uh, that's what we're looking at and that's exactly what that is. That's Kelly back there in that number two spot. And that's Stu Baylor in the number one position and the, oh wow look at this Baylor really choosing up different lines and going to some some different places out there I thought that Ben was maybe going to sneak by him there on that particular uh, little uh, transit uh, uh, transaction through that through that turn but uh, Stu really seems to be uh, kind of riding uh, not necessarily forcing the envelope he's just kind of hitting his marks and hitting his lines out here in this open field section he's still got a lot of speed but he's also got Ben Kelly right there and, and like we said you know we we've heard him talk and I heard him talk in interviews earlier in the season one of the riders that he has been concerned about on several different levels and for <laughs> several different reasons one of those is speed that he is closing up on him right now is is that Ben Kelly is going to be one of the big threats as far as uh, racing not only uh, race by race but uh, possibly and likely in a championship scenario now as we uh, watch these riders now make their way through the 
wood lines here and of course in the mountains of West Virginia on these mountaintops it's uh, not real steep mountainous terrain here kind of hilly more than anything but the elevation is here there uh, hills on a mountain if you will so nothing really too drastic you don't have that snowshoe uh, effect or anything like that there's not a lot of off camber here but there is a lot of tight wood section and look at that still going a, a blanket over the front too as they make their way through these uh, open sections now working through the uh, nine mile marker and heading for the 10 mile marker here pretty soon And uh, again, getting lost in this race right now. Wow, looking at this race, you know, watching the ATVs race yesterday, saw a little bit of dust kicking up, kind of like what we're seeing out here. Uh, man, just amazing what kind of conditions we have out here. Uh, not too wet, not too moist, and, and, and not too dry. Temperatures are perfect today. Conditions are perfect to watch uh, from our Yamaha Racing Sky Cam. And there they are at the 10 mile marker, as we said, pushing toward the 10. That is still Stu Baylor, and yes, that is Vin Kelly on the 530 making his way through literally on the rear fender of the 514 here at the 10 mile marker now. There is your third place ride now. The 127 Jordan Ashburn seems to be running about 10 seconds off the pace of your front two riders now. And we'll see what kind of a, a gap is opened up to fourth place. Now Lane Michael, when he checked in at the finish line, was in a fourth place position, but we also saw that he went down and he spent a lot of time in the pits. So there's a pretty good possibility that that Duval got around him there and moved into that fourth place position. And uh, we may see Josh Train inching towards that uh, top five position at the same time. Meanwhile, we pick the action back up in this battle for the lead in the Yamaha Racing uh, Sky Cam. And it's still the Yamaha mounted rider of Stu Baylor out front of this one as they bob and weave their way through the trees. And, you know, talk about how tight this uh, this course is. We're seeing, uh, yeah, it's, it's tight, but uh, it's starting to open up. We're starting to see some alternate lines really be used out there by these uh, XC1 Pro Class riders. And you can see that a lot of different individuals are using those lines because they're starting to get burned in uh, more single track lines than what the uh, ATVs left for them from yesterday's racing and that was the, the the big key everybody especially on the ATV side of things talking about how tight things are here a new venue for us yeah we've had some uh, locals or there has been some locals that have been ran here but uh, obviously a lot if not all new trail that we're running here in Newburgh West Virginia it is a brand new trail for the GNCC, so uh, everything that these guys are seeing, it's all new and uh, everybody's on uh, a fair and even playing ground. Uh, unless you might be from West Virginia, then you might have a little slight edge because you got the crowd on your side. There's no doubt about it. The uh, crowd uh, around Preston County certainly uh, uh, and a lot of the local racers here uh, from earlier morning races, you know, they're they're out uh, cheering on these XC1 Pro Class riders. And there's a lot of folks, uh, especially around West Virginia, I believe, that are uh, Stu Baylor fans. There's no doubt about it, especially after that win when he opened up that winning streak in Beckley, West Virginia, down in uh, the southern part of the state. Still watching this battle wage on through the trees right now. And, and, you know, lap traffic a factor, yes and no. We are witnessing these riders encountering that lap traffic. Uh, for the most part, the right, lap riders are getting out of their way. There has to be, I'm sure, some second guessing going on by our lead riders on what is going on as far as their uh, passing lines and so forth, but uh, still picking and choosing and trying to use their head. Here they come into the finish line. Chicanes now, Stu Baylor out front. This will wrap up lap number four. According to what I'm seeing here, we may be a little bit uh, later on time, so the lap times might be slowing down. Yeah, it went from a 26.36 to a 27.10. And now Ben Kelly checking in at a 27.03. He was actually faster than Stu Baylor after we check in. And it uh, looks like he might be faster coming out of the uh, finish line area as we begin lap number five now. Looks like Ben Kelly, man, on a mission trying to get around Stu Baylor and make his own statements here in this final round of racing. If you remember correctly, last year it wasn't until the last round of racing that Ben Kelly was able to get uh, his overall win. But uh, remember, he had raced a lot of the um, XC2, but not only that, uh, this season he's been out of uh, due to injury. So to see the per kind of progression we've seen out of him, there's the 282 Mike Witkowski, leader of the XC2 Pro Class, uh, seemingly still out front by himself as we uh, saw the uh, gap had opened up quite a bit. 
uh, over the course of lap number four here that uh, we are wrapping up right now. Liam Draper kind of dropping out of that battle. We last checked, it was uh, the long dropping off several spots to uh, the top five or just barely outside the top five there. So uh, a lot of questions to be answered as these riders check in and we reassess the situation here with these riders. Uh, we see that Jordan Ashburn has checked in nine seconds back. Uh, he so far is the only other rider than your leaders of Baylor and nope, take that back. Josh Strang has checked in as expected, moving up in positions to a fourth place position. Uh, he is now one minute and 11 seconds behind Jordan Ashburn. It puts him a minute and 10 seconds behind Ben Kelly. Looking at lap times right now, Josh Strang a 27-22. Uh, to the uh, front runners 2703 and 2710. He's going to have to find a little bit more speed if he intends to uh, close any gaps up on first and second. But Jordan Ashburn could see himself in a little bit of trouble if uh, Josh Strain can uh, get some clear wind here in these uh, next couple of laps. Lane Michael now in the number five spot, 14 seconds off the pace of Josh Strain. The long back in the number six position as Trevor Bollinger checks in in seventh aboard the 739. Wow, Bollinger right there on Andrew DeLong's rear wheel less than a second uh, at the uh, scoring barrels as they checked in there a few moments ago grant baylor another 13 seconds back as we told you Ryder very nervous heading into this race today, just wanting to come out of this one clean and unscathed as he was hoping to uh, capture the uh, National Enduro title next weekend. Uh, there is Thad Dufal. He has not checked in yet with his fourth lap, or at least, uh, nope, has not checked in with fourth lap complete yet. So we got to wonder what's going on with bad Thad. Hopefully no major uh, incidents, uh, especially after coming back from injury. I uh, hate to see something like that here in the uh, final round of the season. But the good thing about it is it is the final round and if something did happen he would have the winter to try to once again heal up and prepare and get ready for the uh, upcoming and new championship that's anybody's ball game as you've heard so many people say a new champion will be crowned in 2021 but today we will have a winner crowned here in this uh, xc1 pro class and we will crown a champion as well in the xc2 250 pro class so we got some pretty cool things going on here. Here comes Wachowski now into the finish line region. Duvall still not checked in yet, by the way. Mike Wachowski not only now ahead of him on adjusted time, but also physically on the racetrack. So not real sure what's going on with the uh, 989 just yet. Here comes uh, the rest of the field in the XC2. So let's uh, break them down for you as they make their way across the uh, finish line stripe there. Uh, Mike Witkowski was leading Liam Draper just a lap ago, but as we uh, wrap up lap number four, Mike Witkowski out front, a 27.39. He stayed pretty consistent to what his lap time was uh, on lap number uh, three here on lap number four. Rodney, look at this. This is the battle for the championship coming in. Yeah, and, and I don't see anybody else that has checked in in the second place position. Yeah, second and third are right in front of him. So Craig Long there in fourth. That was Cody Barnes in second, Liam Draper in third, and Mike and uh, Craig DeLong in fourth as they check in. Wow, 44, almost 45 seconds back to Barnes between Wachowski and Barnes in first and second, Liam Draper 1.6 seconds back of Barnes, Craig DeLong 1.8 seconds back of Liam Draper. Look at this, here's your battle for the lead on screen, and it could not get any closer. We keep saying that, but it just keeps getting it stays the same. Since it can't get any closer, it stays just that close. <laughs> and they're battling wheel to wheel, just tit for tat around this track. They they are. And I'm going to tell you, I've had a couple of moments where I've kind of taken a breath, waiting to see what's going to happen. Uh, ben is really getting a little creative in some of those lines. And I'm not going to say aggressive, but uh, he is certainly not letting the fact that Stu Baylor is in front of him slow him down any. Absolutely not. And here they are, wheel to wheel, and they're headed for VP Fuels Pro Row. <clears throat> they have already each pitted on lap number two. So will they pit again this lap? Stu Baylor into the pits. Ben Kelly making the pass, but Ben Kelly looking like there is a sign. Oh, no, sorry. Neither rider nope. stopping. They both continued on. Yeah, uh, they just gave uh, Ben Kelly a pit board. It's all that they gave him. I didn't couldn't see what they, what it was. I was watching out the window here, seeing if anybody was stepping out with a gas can. Nothing like that happening. So. And Jordan Ashburn still really close. 
Yeah, I, I, you know, yeah, we're not getting to see that a lot as far as the camera shots, but yeah, uh, Ashburn only nine seconds, he's, uh, less than 10 seconds uh, behind that battle for first and second place right now. I did hear while I was out and about, Rodney, going to grab something to drink, I heard Thad Duvall's wife say that Thad does not have a clutch. Uh, that so could, that would explain why he's kind of dropped off the radar a little bit there. Yeah, that would explain every reason why he's dropped off the radar. Those are, at this level anyway, kind of hard to, to, to race this race and, and, and do it competitively without a clutch. There are your leaders on screen. The rider on the blue machine you see out front, Stu Baylor, closely behind him on the factory KTM is uh, Ben Kelly. And wow, look at this. I, I mean, I feel like we've seen this battle so many times <laughs> in the last couple of weeks. Stu Baylor on that factory uh, and pro Yamaha. Ben Kelly on the factory FMF KTM. And uh, you know, it's like these guys, they just find each other on the track and they battle and that's what yeah. they do. Yeah, it's almost, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just like destiny. Destiny brings them together, and uh, certainly uh, they make for a, a great war. There's no doubt about it. I'm looking for a sticker. If you're wondering why I'm digging around in my pockets here and kind of searching for words at the same time, got me a sticker, a couple of stickers, as a matter of fact. I must have put them in my truck, but have you seen the Stu Crew Yamaha Racing stickers by any chance? I have, yeah. And we've also got the 2024 Make American Dirt Great Again or something like that. <laughs> Stickers for Stu Baylor. So somebody getting pretty creative out there. Yeah, it looks like on VP Fuels Pro Row, as those guys check through there, uh, it was still Grant Baylor starting to put on a little bit of a charge. He's getting inching just ever so closely to the riders in front of him, which is Trevor Bollinger, Andrew DeLong, Lane Michael, and also Josh Strang just ahead of them. So uh, looking like, uh, it looks like Andrew DeLong was just in the pits. He did lose a spot to Grant Baylor, at least as it looks like as they exit BP Fuels Pro Row there. So he was the one who was pitting. If you remember, he pitted early. He pitted at the end of lap number two when no one else did. So now he has pitted again uh, on lap number four. So he's going with a two pit strategy where it seems most of the other riders pitted on lap number three, trying to go, at least trying to make it uh, on, on just one pit. Well, we remain to be seen if this will be a six or seven lap race. I don't know if they've called that officially yet. We've not heard. Uh, we believe it will probably be a six lap race, but we don't know that for a fact just yet. Yeah, it, it's kind of hard to tell. We're running 27-minute laps now, um, and we were running, you know, in the 26-minute range as well. So uh, it has slowed down a little bit, so uh, that could lend itself to uh, more of a six-lap race than a seven-lap race. Here we go through the uh, Monster Mile once again, and it uh, looked like maybe a little different alternate line choice for Stu Baylor, but it, it kept him out front there in, in front of the 530. Yeah, Stu taking that outside line, Ben preferring that inside line in the Monster Mile through the, the uh, coal piles, I guess, if you will. Um, some discarded coal that didn't make, the, didn't make the grade to go get burned in somebody's furnace, so it's just kind of hanging out there on the hill for now. <laughs> um, that's West Virginia for you. This is whole country, baby. That's it. There we see Stu again. On the, and now here's Wachowski on screen uh, working his way. He'll be coming through VP Fuels Pro Row. We can actually look out in the front of the studio and see him. And I'll tell you what, that man is riding like a man on a mission. Wow. I mean, you have to wonder what's going, I mean, uh, going through his mind right now. You know they're giving him the pit board at how close and how tight it is right now. And you know uh, he's trying to focus on doing what we, you know, have said. He just has to win this race and worry about what happens behind him after it happens. But you know, it's easier said than done, John. Actually, I, that's a question I have. Are they giving him pit boards about what's going on behind him? I mean, I'm sure they're giving him his gap. But I, if I was in Mike's position, I wouldn't want to know. If I, if I know if I go out and I win the race, I've done all I could do. So you got to want, and, and that's a personal strategy thing. So maybe they spoke about it before the race. You know, are they telling him, hey, currently you're leading, you know, you're leading, but you need, that's almost too much to think. I think he just, you know, he stretched out a very comfortable lead right now. There we see, here comes the riders, two, three, four. So now it's Draper in second, third place there, uh, right behind him is Oh, no, whoa, Craig DeLong has dropped way back now. Well, when I say way back, about 15 more bike lengths, but he is back behind, so there is, and now DeLong in for fuel. He's going to lose even more time, so Cody Barnes was already ahead of him. Liam Draper was already ahead of him. Now Jonathan Johnson has gotten around him, so he's all the way back in that fifth-place spot, and you've got to think that if you're Craig DeLong, you do not want these guys.
guys riding so well today? Because they all are. They're right there. They're riding well. And they're really making him work it. And he's got to get second if Mike wow. Murkowski wins this thing. High pressure situation. So I guess really all the weight may lie at this particular point and in this circumstance on Craig DeLong. So maybe he is the one that's feeling the heat right now. I'll tell you what. And I hope uh, you, you got to wonder if you're Mike Murkowski, you know, how good of friends are you with guys like Liam Draper and, <laughs> and uh, Cody Barnes and Jonathan Johnson? You know, not that they would do anything to intentionally uh, impede Craig DeLong. Surely that's not the case. But at the same time, you know, when, when you got a guy behind you that's fighting for a championship and it's late in a race like that, you know, and you're digging deep, you got to think, man, like, man, does this guy just want it that much more than me? So that's Craig DeLong. He's got basically, you know, a little over an hour left to find out how bad does he want to be the 2020 XC2 champion? Well, I think that's the big question of the day in both the XC1 and the XC2 class, Johnny Gallagher. Who wants it the most? Well, who is it? Stick around to find out. TNCC Live continues after this. Well, as we all know, GNCC Racing, well, we watch and we want to be the best. But in order to be the best, you got to start somewhere, and that's in our amateur race. And that's what the heart of the GNCC Racing Nation is all about as we take a look at our top results. Look at that. Senior A40 Plus class. We'll get back to that. Jason Raines in that one, believe it or not. But it's Open B class. Dawson Nixon out of Jonesville, North Carolina. Gregory Tenney, Wyatt Ford out of West Union. Also Dylan Fleming and Paul Fitzwater, the third, rounding out the top five of that Open B class as they wrap up the 2020 season here with us. Grant Davis, 250 B class. Winning that one, Cameron Madison, Joshua Connor, Lane Wintmer, and Noah Martz, I think. Grant, is he just moving up from the amateur rank, or youth ranks, I believe? So uh, congratulations to uh, Grant on a great run, uh, ride starting out here in things. The 150B class, Toby Cleveland leading uh, Peyton Gwynn, Aiden Myers in the number three spot. It's Hayden Serena in the fourth place position as Jacob Thomas rounds out your top five. Jack Joy also moving up from the amateur ranks, or excuse me, the youth ranks um, earlier this year out of Terre Haute, Indiana. In that number one spot of the four-stroke B-Lights class, Ty Ely in second, Levi Ward third, Miles Gefkin fourth, and it's Max Grant rounding out the top five. Michael Davis leading the Bet B30 Plus class out of Cutler, Ohio over David Ravinsky out of Slopesburg, New York. Jeremiah Taylor is your third place ride with Josh Webb and Josh Reel rounding out the top five. Senior B40 plus class, Scott Dallin on the Waynesburg, Pennsylvania. Shannon Hatfield from Logan, Ohio in second. Jason Wallace in third is Joselton Ramos in the fourth place position. And Ray Hench rounds out your top five after four laps of racing complete or three laps of racing complete for those guys. Four, four laps complete. Stu Baylor, Ben Kelly, Jordan Ashburn, Josh Strang, Lane Michaels. That's the way they checked in there just a few moments ago. And, of course, uh, as we see Thad Duvall dropping off to that ninth-place position, experiencing some clutch problems at the moment. 
The battle for the championship down to the wire right now. Mike Wikowski holding on to that one. Got uh, big favors coming in from uh, Cody Barnes and Liam Draper as they run second and third. Craig DeLong, the nemesis, back in the number four spot. Current points leader, as a matter of fact. Jonathan Johnson rounds out the top five. Your FMF XC3 125 Pro-Am Class Zach Hayes leading Max Fernandez. Eli Childers in the number three spot. Mike DeLosa in fourth. And Jacob Jason Lipscomb rounding out your top five. Will Simon Piper leading the open A class. Chase Hayes in second. It looks like uh, Nathan Rector in the third place position. Tyler Braniff in fourth. And Alex Luger rounds out your top five. 250A class, Tristan Landrum out of Nelsonville, Ohio, leading now. Braden Nolette, who got the early lead in this one, and the whole shot in second. Dakota DeFore in third, Brendan Poling in fourth, and Zachary Davidson rounding out your top five positions. The 150A class, Matthew Howard from Standardsville, Virginia, leading Alex Metz there, another Virginia native. Nick Bar uh, DiBartolo, who got the whole shot in that one in the number three spot. Uh, Cole Hickman in fourth, and Christian Evans rounds out your top five. Cole Whitmer leading the four-stroke A lights class over Tyler Palmer with Mitch Oabe in third, Cooper Jones in fourth, and Michael Welburn rounds out your top five. Yeah, I guess uh, Junior AB 25-plus tw uh, class, Andrew Boggs leading out of Masontown, West Virginia. Not real far from where we are now. Cody Jeffers in that second-place position out of North Carolina with Garrett Marriott in the number three position. It's Matt Bruppy in fourth, and Matthew Patrola, Patrola rounds out the top five. James Bauer leading Joe Marsh in the Vet A30-plus class with Matt Modick in third. Kyle Dangler from FMF is fourth place, and James Singer rounds out your top five. And one more class to look at here, that senior A40 plus class, Jason Raines leading Frank Messina, smiling Frank, shotgun. Sean back in the number three spot, Joel Stoles in fourth, and Dwayne Connor, former pro rider in the number five position. So James, or excuse me, Jason Raines, I knew he was moving up. Greg got this. I knew that we, I knew that he was moving up, but I, I just didn't quite realize that uh, he was moving up as much as what he did uh, as we took a look at that am amateur rundown. That was the first one that popped up. It was only up there for just a couple of seconds, and I read that, and I was I got pretty excited for him as they continue to scroll through the uh, more of these guys. Some of them are going to get to see it a couple times, but that's a okay. As uh, it's I think pointed out there, Rodney, you know, with uh, Grant Davis moving up and and when it, currently leading that 250A, and then obviously in the the 150 or the four-stroke A lights class. Uh, Jack Joy. So those are two youth riders moving right up to the three-hour afternoon race and leading two A classes. Or I'm sorry, actually Grant Davis leading the B class, and then uh, or both of them in the B classes. So, so it's four-stroke B lights and uh, the 250 B class, but straight off of uh, basically a big wheel 105. That's so straight impressive. To a, you know, a big boy class and, and to be leading. You know, they're doing well, quite well. Well, we're at the two-hour mark right now. Three hours is the tail of the tape for a lot of these guys. Hey, you know, uh, one rider we haven't really mentioned or talked anything about today. We've mentioned Jonathan Johnson a few times, and, and Ryder's name has come up, but Ryder Lafferty doesn't seem to be uh, must not got the start. Must have had some issues there on lap number one because I kind of would have put him in here as one of these uh, spoilers that we're seeing right now with uh, Cody Barnes and Liam Draper running in right now. It's definitely been a uh, interesting season for Ryder. You know, he uh, started off the season kind of consistent, and then uh, right kind of as we went to a break there with the um, – COVID, he kind of started to really catch his flow, and we came back. He had some podiums, and, and he had a second, and it seemed almost a matter of time until he grabbed a win there, and then he's kind of been struggling here as of late. He did get his first ever, uh, there is Tristan Landon on screen. That's our, I believe you said, 250A uh, leader, and, and potentially probably our overall amateur at this point, I would guess, um, or right up in there if not. But, uh, yeah, Ryder, I think you would probably have to say he's got to be a little frustrated with how these last five rounds have gone. He's just not been in the same position. I know at uh, the Burr Oak GNCC, I actually pulled off with some stomach problems. He's had some crashes. Um, so it just hasn't been going his way. So I'm sure he's one that will be pretty happy to put 2020 behind him uh, and, and get geared up for 2020, 2021. But at the same time, 
you know, he does have to be happy with the fact he got his first career XC2 podiums. You know, he got that second place finish, and he was really up in there battling with those guys uh, in, in the meat of this championship early in the season. You know, one, uh, I want to point out Ben Bowens uh, racing uh, Batman. We know him from New York. We've seen him race the XC1 class in uh, seasons past. Uh, seen uh, the little guy's name yesterday in the youth ATV races, and I believe that's his son or at least a family member that I was like, I wonder if that's Ben's boy, you know. And then the next thing you know, lo and behold, Ben raced. I think it was the morning uh, ATV program, maybe on a 4x4, four four, uh, raced on that, and then is out here racing today in the XC2 Pro, uh, Pro Class. So uh, good to see uh, Ben back with us. And man, he's kind of a busy fellow this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. It took two races in one weekend and having your boy out there racing. Look, look, you did just see Trevor Bollinger and Grant Baylor come by on screen. So those, both of those guys were running inside the top seven uh, as they were working things out there on lap number four uh, here at the seven mile marker. Well, Tristan Landrum is in the top 20 overall, leading the uh, top overall amateur in the 250A class. The 37 uh, is 18th place overall. And just FYI, Ben Bowens is 20th place overall. After Very cool. His, yeah, I think that is pretty cool. Yeah, Batman. Remember back in the day, he used to come to Iron Man, race just that one race, and he would uh, almost always hole shot on that open face helmet, <laughs> yeah. YZ250. Uh, uh, and, and Unadilla, show, Unadilla. Unadilla, I'm yeah. sorry. What did I say? You said Iron Man, but ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Unadilla. Yeah, that's all right. It's late in the season. My brain's about gone. So, uh, interesting. I, I love the stories. Yeah, yeah. Is this, it, is this our leader here on screen? I think. I uh, don't think so. No, it may not be. Uh, not, he was ripping whoever it was for a minute. <laughs> Must have saw the drone overhead. Yeah, he, he was, I got to look good for the camera out here in these fields. He had some great lines. And speaking of other top amateur riders that uh, we'll be uh, looking at here, uh, looks like second place in the top amateurs right now is the uh, Will Simon Piper, leader of the Open A class. He is currently 22nd overall place. Braden Nolet, the 432 out of Charlton, Massachusetts, 250A second place ride is 23rd overall, and that would put him third top overall amateur. I got to tell you, Rodney, you know, I didn't much care for this track from my standpoint. It wasn't my style. Um, but these field sections were some of the most fun uh, sections we've had on a racetrack in 2020, in my opinion. I uh, just had a great flow. I, I think that almost looked like Ben Kelly. I, I yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that might we might have a new leader now as we take a look at that. If that is Ben Kelly, that that is, uh, I believe, Stu Baylor back there in that number two position. So we may have a, a change up front. We'll get a little closer look, but that looks like the, yeah, very unofficial. Just an, an FYI right now. The riding style looks like Ben Kelly. Yeah, team, and that definitely is Stu Baylor behind him. So, folks, we have a new leader. Wow. <laughs> yes, we do. Thanks uh, to the Yamaha Racing drone. We were able to get that just in time. And Ben Kelly looking like he's on a mission, just charging through that rough stuff, trying to put him dis in some distance between himself and the 514 Ampro Yamaha of Stu Baylor. Rodney, this one comes down. We'll find out here in just a matter of moments if we're looking at two laps left or if we're looking at a white flag waving. <laughs> but uh, we're going to know here in a minute. And uh, we're joined in booth now by somebody who knows something a little bit about uh, these races coming down to the wire. We were talking about you just a few moments ago on our top five moments of GNCC. Um, and uh, we're joined in booth by Caleb Russell, the eight-time, I said six-time before, <laughs> sorry to short you on two championships, eight-time champion, 67 wins, and uh, out here, Caleb, you're, you're joining us in the booth today. Tell us a little bit about why you're on this side of the camera today. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, it's uh, obviously, I, I'm bummed to end this way. Here, here, the guys are on camera right now. We got Ben oh. almost going down, watching the front here. Uh, Stu right there in second, staying strong. You know, these guys right here on camera, they're they're uh, asserting themselves to be the, the two guys to, to battle for this championship next year in 21 going forward. You know, these, these guys have been up front the last five races in a row now. Um, it, it's good to see, you know, they're, they're finally coming into their own. You know, Stu's obviously been through tons of adversity over the years, and he's sort of put himself in that position himself. But uh, you know he, he's fighting against all odds when he's the when he's the, the underdog and uh, you know thinks he's the one counted out. He really shines. So uh, Stu's been on it. Ben's been you know clicking away, and uh, yeah, I, I like where Ben is at the, at, at this point. What well, we got an hour left, so probably seven lap race. Is that right? We're waiting to see here. Uh, we're we're kind of waiting on confirmation. We don't know if they're going to throw a 
white lap flag. Board. Yeah, yeah, if they throw the two lap board, or sorry, not a white flag, but if they throw the two lap board at this point, it's going to be coming in yeah. maybe just a shy, shy bit. Sure, yeah. yeah um, but uh, it, it would be um, really close. I, I got to believe at 207, five laps, yeah, they're going to have to throw a two lap board. It's going to be a seven lap race, I yeah. would think. There's no, they, I don't think we're going to see a white flag waving. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, for sure, two laps here. Yeah, because they're doing 26, 27 minute 20, laps. 26, 27 so minute laps. 34, yeah, they're going to go over. They're going to be what, 302, 304? Yeah, they'll be three, yeah. Yeah, 305-ish, uh, depending on just how much these guys ratchet up the pace in the yeah, next yeah. two laps. Yeah, they're, they're, they're pulling away from the rest of the pack. And, and like I said, they, they're, you know, they've been the guys up front here the last five races now. And uh, Ben's been a little bit behind the eight ball here. You know, he puts himself in a bad position on the start. And today, it was almost no different. He wasn't up there. Where Stu was kind of right there in the mix, but the the, the pack was close today. Uh, you know this track is tight, twisty, a little bit slow, and uh, it's a little it's technical. So um, you know Ben likes that stuff. So does Stu. Um, I'm anxious to see. I know there's um, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out and then actually how the results even play out from here. I know there's um, there's some speculation on some some line choice out there as well. You know, uh, watching uh, the, the the ferocity of these battles, and, and you've even competed in them. I mean, Josh Trang. I mean, we've seen a lot of good good things out of him recently. Uh, you know, watching what we're seeing out of Ben, seeing what we've seen out of Stu here is, uh, uh, recently, and and everybody going into next season. Uh, the championship field is deep, and I, I know we talk about these two riders as we get set to wrap up uh, this lap of racing here. Let's see what they have here. The two lap card coming out. And it is. Yep, it yep is. two lap boards coming out. And it looks like it looks like Ben stretched it out. No, nope, there's Stu right there. I was going to say I, I just couldn't a see. Little bit. Four seconds. Four point yeah. four yeah. seconds is what I it's saying. I know that that last you know half mile, mile or so, just from uh, riding it with crew and watching that was the mini bike, the micro track over there. Uh, that really fell apart in a couple couple spots. So that could be uh, something to watch there. You know, at the end, I'm not sure how it's shaping up at this moment, but uh, you know that could. Uh, there's there's lots of little spots out there that can jump up and bite you and. You know, especially if there's a, a guy down in front of you, that's at this stage in the races, you know, the lappers, the, the amateur riders, they're getting tired and it's hard enough for them just to, just to get out of the way. But I, I got to tell you, watching this on screen, I would have expected Stu to retaliate a little more quickly. You got to wonder if he's kind of gathering himself or if it's just maybe Ben is, is quicker in this part of the track. But, but Ben is definitely, as they run right now, marching away just a little bit. And this is just enough that when they get into some yeah, of those you sections, know what? he's going to be out of sight. S Stu looks like he's laboring just a, just a tad bit, you know. He doesn't look like he's as aggressive as he wants to be. Um, you know, I, I know, I know Ben, he really picks it up in the last bit of the race. He gets a little bit more comfortable, and that's, that's his, uh, that area, you know, that last hour. He's, I, I rode behind him all of, uh, you know, last race, the last hour, hour of the race. And I was kind of, I wasn't falling off. I wasn't in my groove and uh, he got around me and I was able to stay with him, but he was really on it. And we sucked back up into those guys. So, you know, I, I'm looking, I'm anxious to see if, uh, you know, Stu can hang with him. He really, he's almost in that zone of where if he gets out of sight, he's gone right there. You know, he's on that, that edge of, uh, I would say the edge of no return. You know, you lose, you make a mistake and you lose another five, eight seconds right here you're probably not catching back up without a mistake from Ben. So um, it's gonna, it's like I said, it's going to be anxious to see. Off-road racing is, here's Mike Witowski on screen. Is he still the XC2 leader? Leading XC2, and as they run right now, he would be your XC2 champion. When they checked in with four laps complete, Craig DeLong had, it was in fourth place when they checked in at the completion of lap four, but actually lost another spot when he stopped the pit. So he last when we saw him on screen, he was back in fifth. And we did the math. If he finishes third, they would tie on points, but Mike Wachowski would win on the second tiebreaker. So that means that he needs to get all the way to second. So he's got to make three passes. He's got to get around Jonathan Johnson, Cody Barnes, and Liam Draper to win that championship. He's got, Craig's got to make three passes. Yep, he's got to make three passes in this last two laps. If he's still in fifth, when we last saw on screen, that's where he was. And interesting, another rider that was right there with them, riding, we didn't talk about this, the 989 of Thad Duvall was also in that mix. We were, we've heard secondhand that he doesn't have a clutch at the moment. Um, don't know exactly what that means. It, it sounded, the, the motion that was it, made. He, his left hand guard was missing, so it, 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 if he doesn't have a clutch, he must have fell and broken the, the clutch line. If, if, 
now that it's making folks sort of sense. Craig DeLong has made those passes. There you He's go. in the second place. <laughs> Liam Draper hot on his heels. So he right now, Craig DeLong is where he needs to be to win this 2020 XC2 title. Cody Barnes there in fourth. So there they are, two, three, and four. And just in that amount of time from the seven mile marker when we saw him, he was all the way back in fifth, all the way up to second. Craig DeLong right now, man on a mission. Wow, uh, that's how quickly th things can turn around. And that's what we were talking about, you know. Oh, what's this? Josh Strang appears to be into the uh, Abbott's Online Team Green pits now. So uh, a wheel problem, maybe maybe a bent sprocket. Maybe? Mm. I don't. I'm, that's just speculation at this point. But they're, they're working on that rear like, end. That looks like they're taking the master cylinder off over there. Like he may have lost the yeah, rear brakes. Possibly. And maybe mm -hmm. that's what they're doing. They're they've taken they're the axle the off so they can. Yep, there it is. So the master cylinder coming off, the brake caliper coming off. And that's a heartbreaker for Josh Strang because he had made up a good bit of ground. Yeah. Probably wasn't going to be in the battle for a podium, but it definitely worked himself up into the conversation. In fact, I think he was in fifth uh, when we last saw him. Yeah, that's a bummer to come off, uh, you know, a, a win, and you you want to end the season on a high note, obviously. So, uh, you know, Josh is another one of those guys. If he he, well, he wasn't really up there battling at the beginning, uh, but you know, he only gets stronger as the race goes on and. That's uh, that's definitely hard to see. He probably could have clawed his way back up there to, you know, maybe get into podium contention. I, I doubt he's going to catch Kelly and, and Baylor, but uh, you know, he's he's uh, he's got that mentality. Once the race gets going on, he, he only gets better lap after lap. And if he start, like I said, if he starts up front, the guy's going to be be there the whole race. So. Um, and, and to see them changing out a brake caliper system, or a complete brake system this late in the race, the final race, I, I could be wrong, but I believe Josh is locked into that second place in points. Yeah, he, he's, he's um, for sure So this is at this point, you know, they're just going out there for pride, trying to see if he can somehow salvage a top five or even a top ten. Um, you know, and this is just kind of practice on the track. You know, they're maybe yeah. they'll mess with some settings or something, and knowing that we may come back here and race next year, just a little bit more seat time around this place. There you see your leader on screen stretching it out. Two miles in, Ben Kelly, and he is going to be coming into the BP yep, right row. He is. And wow. he has definitely stretched it out over Stu yeah. Baylor. That gap is getting bigger and bigger. Yep, like I said, Stu looks like he's lost another, like, you know, two, three, three, seconds, three, yeah. three to five seconds, and he's coming into the pit, too. He's oh, pitting. Ben did not pit. Did not Stu pit. is pitting. So maybe they figured, well, ben, ben, I would think, would have to pit next lap. Um, so he's probably using this as an opportunity to try and stretch that gap out because I don't think Ben would be able to make four laps after pitting on lap three. Yeah, but they're, they're going to come in a uh, splash of gas, you know, two, three seconds max. That's, you know, he had, he had what, like uh, six to eight seconds right there, maybe, yeah, maybe 10, close to 10. Yeah. Uh, so Stu probably just lost another. It's That wasn't a quick splash, it didn't seem like. You know, that was a, a that was almost a normal pit stop from what we've watched there. Yeah, now Jordan Ashburn coming into VP Fuels per row. We'll Jordan's find out for far, far behind, yeah. That's yeah. a good ride for Jordan. Doesn't look like Going he's stopping for fuel either, so maybe just a splash on that final lap. Yeah, this is this Jordan is good Ashburn. to see Jordan. You know, he's 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 been at it for a long time. He's been on the bubble, you know. He's 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 on like uh that bubble, that fourth to fifth place guy, and he he just needed that that breakout ride to, to get up there and get on the podium. You know, the the, the class has been a little bit weak this year, so you know, a lot of guys have had chances, but he just hasn't been able to make it happen. So it's 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 nice to see that, you know, a lot of guys have returned and, you know, he's, he's stepped it up today. Yeah, you know, like you said, there was some guys out injured throughout the season. Everybody, with the exception of yourself, I believe, is out there. And Josh Toth also not out there today. But um, other than you two, everybody else is out there and healthy. And, and Jordan led two laps of this one and is still, you know, within sight of second and, and no more than 25 seconds or so off of the lead. So looks like Josh Strang going back out. He is actually going to have to go out and return from yeah, where he came where from he came on the from. track. You're going to see he's going to duck through the uh, the banners here and head back over to the section of track where he left. So we're going to see him drop well outside the top 10, uh, very possibly outside the top 20 in the overall. But we'll, we'll see exactly how once he comes in and checks in with uh, five laps complete. Ben Kelly on screen leading the way still from our Yamaha Racing Skycam, continuing to stretch it out. We're going to speculate somewhere around a 10-second lead. And then with that stop for Stu Baylor, maybe a few more seconds to it and I think Caleb you know obviously you're a guy that's been in this position this many times Ben is going to be looking at those pit boards and in the chance he has in the fields taking a look over to gap and kind of meter his effort because if his effort is paying off and he's stretching away he's going to continue to just floor it and go for it but if but if he's not making any gains you know is he going to continue to run himself ragged trying to get away if Stu's able to stay right there uh you know ben, Ben's a young guy and uh, he, you know, ride, just riding with him the last few races, 
like I said, he, he gets stronger as the race goes on. The, the guy's not going to back down. He's, he's going to go for it the whole time. Look like, yeah, Lane coming into pit. Yeah, right Lane there. almost missed the pass in his pit there. He came jumping up into VP's Fuel Pro Row. Yeah, ben, Ben's not going to let up. He's, he's going to go as hard as he's going to give it 100% um, all the way to the end. And, uh, you know, if Stu catches him and beats him, then that's, you know, that's all he had. Look at He's looking good. He's looking strong. You know, that's that. I noticed last lap he doubled that, down. That on there. that on camera right there. That's that's no sign of letting up. That's uh, you know pure determination. Wants wants to get this win today. Um, I, I know the the results here. You know, and this is just speculation, but uh, the results in XC1 and XC2, the way they stand, I know there's going to be some penalties served up here to come. There's uh, there's been some uh, you know there's black and black and yellow placards out there that you, you need to go between. There's uh, uh, been a few guys that missed some, so oh. we'll, we'll see what we'll see what it shakes out. Well, we'll, uh, we'll stay so tuned. So more than one, then, huh? Yeah, there's quite a few guys actually. You know, no, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate to see it, but these guys cycle the track. They know what they're doing. Um, yeah, it's 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 tough to see, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what shakes out. I know I uh, I actually handed Tim Carter some video myself. Um, you know, just policing the track and. Like I said, I'm not trying to bust anybody, but these guys know the track, know the trail. They they cycle it multiple times, and it's their it's their job, it's their decision. And uh, you know, you got to do what's right every time. Not not every not a, not every once in a while. You got to you got to do the right thing every time. Right on. I uh, hey, I I respect that and appreciate that. And uh, you know, that's something that uh, you know, like say, it, maybe it's late in the season. They don't think. You, you got to abide by all the rules through every race, through uh, every minute of every race. So there you go. Uh, Caleb, uh, you know, looking ahead to next season, man, and this is one question that I've, I've, I've just kind of wanted to pick your brain about, man. Uh, obviously, you know, we've had a lot of guys out this year with uh, injury and a lot of crazy things happening, but we've also seen uh, some some wild things happening with Stu and, you know, the resurgence of uh, Josh Strang and things like that. Heading into next season, man, I mean, the field is wide open. Are there any clear-cut, uh, clear-view riders that you think are going to stand out hot, far and above the rest? Do you think it's going to be a situation where one guy kind of controls and everybody's trying to chase him, or is it going to be, it's going to be a, a fight for dominance for a while? Um, no, I mean absolutely. There's there's two clear-cut, you know, guys that are establishing themselves right this minute uh, as the guys to beat, and that's you know, uh, Stu Baylor and Ben Kelly. I right. Mean, they're the guys. They, the last five races they've been up there, and uh, you know at times. Um, the, the last, like I said, the last five races. Here's Mike Wachowski in the yep. pit. Uh, he, he seems to have a pretty comfortable lead in that XC2 class. But but getting back to, to next year in the championship scope, um, yeah, you know, uh, there's there's stats still coming back and Bollinger just coming back. But Ricky's uh, going to be back. Ricky's going to be back. But he, the, these guys are still a little bit behind. These guys have got the momentum. They they know what they're capable of. They're they're showing it on the track right now. If they stay healthy. Um, I feel like just with these results in the last few races, you know, that confidence that 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 carries them into next year. And, you know, these other guys are coming in and they're like, OK, we, we, we got some work to do and catch up. But to, it's to get over that next hump. It's, uh, you know, it's, 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 at, at this stage, it's all mental. You know, all the, I think all these guys can, can get into it and get into the mix. Uh, but it's it's who takes it to the next level and, you know, makes it happen. Right. And Stu and Ben are are doing that they're displaying uh you know championship level race race racing skill right now exactly and guys uh, on screen sorry to cut you off yeah, but a, that is battle. our that is the battle for the xc2 championship not between the two riders that are actually in it but one of the riders that is and oh and that Duvall still there with that xc2 battle stopping for a splash of gas obviously an xc1 rider we know is having some clutch issues uh looks like he may have damaged that clutch lever or maybe by now they've repaired it because it looked like he used it pulling out there but at one point his clutch was out so there may have been some damage there but uh right now as they run it looks Looks like the man with the uh, grasp on the championship is Craig DeLong sitting there in that second place position. That's all he needs to do to wrap this one up. Folks, stay tuned because this one's far from over. We've still got a great battle going on for the win. We've got a battle for the championship in that XC2 class coming back. we got about a lap and a half of racing left. Join us back here in just a moment on Racer TV Live.
Born of family values and a homegrown work ethic, Kemetic Gasket seals your machine so you can focus on the finish line. Kemetic Gaskets are the competitive standard for racers who demand the very best. Kemetic Gaskets are constructed from superior materials designed to perform in the most demanding environment. Whether it's championships on the line or a day in the dirt with friends, professionals and enthusiasts depend on Kemetic. Kemetic Gaskets, sealing championships since 1989. to put our adventures on hold. But now is the perfect time to prepare for their return. Amsoil has your back with fast, free shipping and ordering has never been easier. Just look up your vehicle, select your product, add an oil change to your cart and check out. Spend $50 on Amsoil products and shipping is on us. Order now at Amsoil.com. Even when you're the best, you never stop striving to be better. With over 40 years of experience in motorcycle sales and service, we know racing. Our inventory of Yamaha motorcycles, sport bikes, dirt bikes, ATVs, and side-by-sides is extensive and constantly changing. Stop by Lojack Cycle Sales today in Tarentum, Pennsylvania, and visit our online inventory at www.lojacks.com. Yamaha YZs. It's why we ride. Yeah, here we are at the Buckwheat 100, the uh, final round of the GNCC season, and it's a new venue, so I'm super excited. Um, you know, it was cool that we got all the rounds in. You know, unfortunately, I wasn't able to make them because I was hurt beginning of this season, but been around for the second half, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling good now. Um, speed's coming back, fitness is there, everything, and, and uh, yeah, so I'm excited for today. Uh, track looks really good. You know, it's got some rocky stuff, some some softer loamy dirt and some fast open fields a little bit of everything um out here in west virginia so excited to get out there and uh try to bring it home strong and uh really want to get that first win of the season so just shooting for that yeah i guess you could say that you know uh just thinking about it as any other race you know i always want to do the best i can and and you know go for that win and, and stay up front so um yeah, my last chance. I got to make it happen. So, uh, yeah, just going to get out there, do what I know how to do, and uh, try to run away from those guys. All right, we're back, folks, and uh, we're hitting, sitting here waiting at the seven-mile marker, and uh, you can start to see it's starting to get just a little bit darker in the woods. The sun's starting to go down in the sky, and, uh, you know, this is coming this direction. These guys aren't going to be affected, but on their way out, and here is your leader, Ben Kelly. The 530 FMF KTM has broken away on the race clock. We see he drops down that hill at 225.58, and we'll, uh, we'll wait and see exactly what the gap is back to Stu Baylor, but it has already grown. It was nine seconds ago scoring it's uh we're up yeah 15 we're gonna be close to 20 seconds if not over 
Yeah, it looks like it's right at 20. Oh, Pretty much a 20 second deficit. 20 seconds, so that's from nine seconds to 20 in about seven miles of race course. So he stretched that out that much more. And uh, that's, you know, you almost got to believe at that point, um, you know, Caleb, when you pull somebody 11 seconds in seven miles and you were just battling with them at, through those same sections the lap before, looking racy, looking aggressive, you got to believe that, you know, it, barring unforeseen <laughs> circumstances, it seems Ben Kelly probably has this one. Yeah, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not I'm not sitting here saying Stu's tired and, he, and he's fallen back by any means, but but Ben looked like, you know, he was motivated and he was he was attacking the track in a different manner. And Stu was, you know, a little bit hesitant in spots. Like, um, you know, as as a racer, you know, I can I can sit here and look and tell by the riding style how aggressive somebody is. And, and even Ashburn, he's not super far. What, he's about forty he seconds. He's about forty off. seconds behind. So yeah, Ashburn. This is probably Ashburn's best race of the year. You know, he's he's looking like he's charging right there and. Obviously wanting to solidify third place for the day, and uh, you know, barring a mistake, he might even be able to catch up to Stu. But um, that's that's a little bit of a long shot with a lap and a half to go. But uh, and, and they, Caleb, how much of this comes down to when you say like you can see a guy that's comfortable, you can see a guy that's charging. It, it would be hard not to point out that these are somewhat atypical conditions for GNCC. Yes, it's a rough course. Yes, it's in the woods. Yes, it's dirt, but with the rock mixed in, with a little bit of different soil here, and with nobody having really a baseline for a setting for this place, not having raced here, you know, how much of what we're seeing late in the race could be guys that really nailed their setup versus guys that maybe struggled a little bit to find their clicker settings? Yeah, I mean, it, it could. Like, I, I know f just from riding with Stu and and, uh, and Ben the last the last few races, uh, Ben made a, a small fork change going into the day. Um, with the, the dirt being a little bit harder, it looks it looks loamy on screen, but it's actually uh, a pretty hard slick. Oh yeah, uh, you know the, it's not soft and ruddy, so he, he softens his forks up a little bit, and there's some rocks out there. And uh, I know from riding with with Lane all the time, and right from riding behind Stu at some of these races, uh, when, when those Yamahas get these conditions, you know those those bikes, they're, they're, it seems like those those bikes really excel in these these types of terrain. And uh, yes, like I said, Stu's been. You know, awesome at the last five races. Uh, he, he's he's put in more consistent results in these last five races than his entire career. No question. So yeah. he's he's definitely whatever happened in the time Stu Baylor was away from it. He, he's looking good, and like I said, that's you know that's Stu being the underdog. He, he's he's been counted out by a lot of these guys on this pro row, and he, he's wanting to prove them wrong. So uh, I'm I'm anxious to see you know when Stu isn't the underdog and he's the guy you know, the man for the job, how he responds to that, because that's that's more pressure than, uh, than being good the guy point. to beat, very, you know? Very good point. And, you know, I was kind of thinking the same thing, and I, I was wondering because, you know, uh, who knows? I mean, I know there's not been any announcements or anything like that, and who knows if and when or uh, what the announcement will be, if they will, but you, but you have to think that with the success that you're seeing with Stu Baylor on the Yamaha, that's something you're going to possibly see and likely see in the upcoming season. Is he now just riding as a, I mean, not saying he's riding as a job, but does he not feel the pressure that he felt before if he maybe has something secure that people don't know about right now and maybe he don't need to push or don't have the heart or the desire to push as hard as he did those other rounds? No, I, I don't think that plays into any factor for this race or these these races here. I'm, I'm talking about going into next year when, you know, he, he's in this he's into this season 2020 uh, right. as the guy to beat. And uh, when, when you take that pressure and Look at Ben, you know, working the edges there. Wow, that was yeah. high, cutting down. You know, he's feeling. It looks like he's. I, I can't. I can't tell where Stu is on here, but I'm sure Ben can see him wherever he's at. Yeah, wow. he's checking. Oh, checking progress and yeah. knowing that. Uh, knowing that he's opened up ground just a little bit. That's a. That's a nice little jump down right that's there. Huge. These on these guys are hard on the throttle and Ben, like you said, Caleb, definitely not letting up. He's he doesn't he he earned those uh, 20 seconds that he's got over Stu right now, give or take. Yeah, he sure. doesn't want to give a single one of them back. He wants to come into this white flag waving with every opportunity to further stretch that gap and not have to worry in the final moments. I mean, we saw Ben at Mason Dixon really get up to Stu's rear wheel and Stu admitted after the race caught him off guard, didn't know he was there. So Ben's not going to want to put himself in that same position for sure. Yeah, and like I, like I said, ben, Ben's young and he's hungry and he, he just... Uh, he's not gonna flip that switch off, you know. Like if I was in this position, if I was in his position, you know, I honestly, I, I wouldn't be, I probably wouldn't be riding at this at this day and age with the same intensity. Um, you know, I'd be letting up a little bit, but uh, you know, he, he's he's clicking it away. He's he's still on the gas, as you can see, just just you know, in the in his form and in his lines, 
selection and how he's attacking the track right, right there, like just flowing, you know? And it's hard to see from this camera angle, but that is really rough down through there. And this turn he's here. He's the bumps. You know, that's a, that's a guy that's on point and he's feeling it. And obviously we don't, we don't see what Stu's doing here, but I, like, like I said, I'm not saying Stu's getting tired, but, but Ben is hungry. He wants to win this year. Um, he, he's, he came into the season hurt. Um, and I feel like he would have been really, you know, if he wouldn't have got himself hurt, it would have, he would have been, I would have been battling Ben for this championship this year. Uh, you know, maybe not the whole season, but he was going to be tough to beat in a lot of races, especially these last five. You know, th these are keyed up for, for guys that live up north and ride this, you know, hard pack, slick, rocky, rooty terrain all the time where I, I really excel in the beginning of the year. So it would have been a, a, a cool championship to that see that jersey sure. ripped just about off. So definitely getting into something there. Here is your XC2 leader now, Mike McCaskey on the 282 Ampro Yamaha. Mile marker number seven. He's got about another four miles to go. And then from there, about five miles actually. And from there, it'll be a white flag waving in a scenario where he's done all that he can do so far to this point. Stu Baylor now coming through here at the... Uh, uh at the 10 mile marker and uh still looking good but as you pointed out yeah definitely just uh he's, he's lost some more time yeah he's lost he's a little lost bit more time. time uh so that's 20 he's, second gap is now about 25. yeah he's, he's settling in he's, he's realizing you know ben's ben's on it right now uh a point to prove I'm trying to end this season on uh, on a high note for sure but uh but yeah like, like you said and, and, and back to earlier uh uh, about Stu being the guy to beat next year going in. He, you know, he's won what, uh, four out of the last five races, or three out of the last five races in three in a row. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a whole different mentality, you know, when, when you got something to prove and you're you're the, you know, sort of the, the, the black sheep of the group and, you know, all these teams are, you know, shutting you down. You, you're coming out with something to prove and but now, but now he's he's the man. He's, he's winning races and he's up front. Guys, real quick, uh, that is the XC2 battle for the championship on screen. Craig DeLong still in that second place spot, but hot on his heels. Liam Draper and Jonathan Johnson. So he's got two riders potentially that could knock him out of the Spoilers. position that he needs. And, you know, if you're Craig DeLong, Caleb, you're, those, you're this deep into this thing. His no. They, 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 we were talking about this earlier. For themselves, yeah, they, you know? they want each one of those guys. First off, at the very basics of it, if M Mike Wachowski remains out front, there's only two spots left on the podium, and there's three of them. The, so each the one of them the, the, the only ally ha uh, Craig has in this group right here is Thad, and he's he's behind all of them right yep. there. So, um, and you got to wonder if you're you know if you're Rockstar Husky, you know Thad, after having made repairs to the bike, you know is he maybe out there just kind of trying to help Craig pace along to, to keep him, or is Thad just out there kind of riding for himself to? You know, he, he's obviously haven't taken this much time off. You know, bike settings, all that kind of stuff is stuff they're probably working on to get ready to go into 2021. Yeah, I feel like, you know, he, he started up front. And like I said, I, I was unaware. I just seen him when I was out on the track. He, was, he, he dropped way back there. And I seen that his handguard was missing. And then obviously it makes sense with the clutch issue, uh, that left side being damaged. Uh, but at this point, I, I feel like Thad's just out there, you know, trying to get that seat time, trying to get that that race aspect back into his life because uh you know you, you you miss half the year it's that's a lot of time but but here comes ben he's pulling his visor down the sun's getting in their eyes oh man it's, it's uh, bad. four o'clock the sun's gonna set in another hour and a half here shoving that thing down about another hour if that yesterday by about <laughs> five o'clock it was about dark in the woods <laughs> yeah he's gonna look like a goon the last lap but uh as long whatever it takes to get the job done. 26 19 lap time, man. He he, he picked it up. Yeah, qu picked yeah, quite a bit. They, they've dropped about a minute in the last couple of laps, or at least Ben has, anyway. Yeah, pushing hard. Really, really trying to uh, stretch it out. You can see there, you can see again, it's trying to stay out of the rough stuff, like you pointed out, just kind of dissecting the track, not running the berms, not running the main lines. This track really did get chopped out more so than I had anticipated. Yeah. Uh, the dirt. This, this, this overhead view is a good, a good shot. You can kind of, especially with the way the sun is, like mm -hmm. you can see the shadows and the bumps and yep. how long they are. You can't tell how big those are, but those, the exits of those turns, uh, that, that chatter is, you know, it beats the hell out of you. Yeah. You know, those uh, those hands and your butt, they really feel yeah. it. And you uh, pointed out the ground here is really hard. You know, yeah, it, it's, it's it looks definitely. loamy in the woods, but it's, it's about not, like a it's rock. Not. Yeah, yeah. There's there's loam in the turns, like just from the, the roost of the bike, you know, but underneath in the middle of the track, those ruts, they're they're polished, they're slick. Uh, it's, it's tough. It, it really does a number uh, on your body just beating you up. It's choppy.
Oh, feedback coming through there, but uh, so Ben Kelly leading the way in this one. Six laps complete, two hours, 36 minutes into this one, and he is out on what will be the final lap of racing action here at the Buckwheat 100. Round 13 of 2020, a wild 2020 by all accounts, not just the racing action, off the track, on the track, and to see it come down to a battle like this that it really has been all day, and, and we can't exactly just go ahead and hand this one to Ben yet, still with, you know, uh, basically about 10 and a half miles of racing left you know with a 25 second ish lead did we did Stu check in did we, we get a uh, we haven't seen them unless unless they're just yeah he, he checked in 21.6 seconds back his lap time was 26 37 a minute and 16 seconds behind him was Jordan Ashburn and uh, wow, there's where the gap really changed yeah because Ashburn was no more than probably 20 seconds behind uh, Baylor when we saw him come out of EP Fuels Pro Road less than a lap ago right so to drop back he's lost over a minute to Stu so as you pointed out Ben picked it up it seems Stu maybe not quite as much as Ben but well, also picked it up yeah he did pick it up uh, he turned a 26 37 I think he was in the 27 minute yeah, range also yeah, so, so they yeah. dropped their lap time and, and like like I said once you once you lose that uh, that line of sight man it, it's really Really hard to, uh, to to keep that distance. Stu's doing a great job and and keeping a, a reasonable gap. Um, but you know, I, I I feel like Stu would be able to hang on to him if he was still oh, yeah. in view. It's it's almost like a, it's a mental it, toe. Yeah, it, it is. It really is because it, you know you you feel like you're going as fast as you can, all you got. But uh, you know, same same thing with me at the last race in Ironman. Like I felt I I knew I was riding. Mm, pretty good and I, I couldn't bridge that gap and then Ben was came up on me he was uh, he, he had it he got around me um, I, I was able to hang with him I dropped my time by you know my lap time by a minute and I wouldn't have been able to do that with myself uh, but I was able to hang with him but I just I couldn't make it happen at the end of the race there was it was really hard to pass so it's uh, it's one of those things where you know n neither rider is you know they're, they're both giving it their all but uh, once you get out of sight and you get that grab that gap, barring any major catastrophe here for Ben or uh, a tangle up with a lapper, it, it's going to be tough for Stu to uh, to bridge that gap and get get back in into sight to where he can make a move or uh, get back up on his rear wheel. Um, you know, it, it's it's crazy to think we we we've got a 12 mile track or 11 and a half mile track, and you know, back in the day, I I remember 20 seconds was nothing, like but now it's like almost a minute. Yeah. Here comes Mike Witowski. Yeah, Mike Wachowski, Monsters, Inc., as they call him. <laughs> he's got around Bollinger. Yep, he's now actually physically past uh, uh, Trevor Bollinger, who's actually quietly having a pretty solid ride back for his first ride back in in nearly a year. We last saw him on yep. track. Uh, very last race. Yeah, uh, Iron Man of last year. So actually, it's technically, it's been over a, over year, a year since we've seen him on a GNCC racetrack, quietly having a good ride, sitting there in what place is he in, Rodney? Uh, in the XC1 class. Mike, who's that? Seventh overall. Yeah, seventh overall, and so that would put him... No, well, he's seventh in... Well, I, well I, I think the... Oh, yeah, no, yeah, so uh, actually... So, yeah, so that's gonna... He's he, gonna he, drop he, back yeah, to eighth he's overall, but he's seventh in class. Yeah, seventh in class, yeah. Oh, actually, wait, no, because that's gotta be a lap old. That is a lap old for Or this. actually, he hasn't checked in yet, but no. he's gotten around... Actually, we he's gotten around Josh Strang, for sure. Yep. And Josh he's gotten around Grant Baylor. Oh, so it's six so and seven. Yeah, he Lane Michael just checked in in the number four spot, guys. There you okay. go. Two minutes and 35 seconds behind Jordan Ashburn. Ashburn. Yeah, so the, uh, uh, Strang was almost two minutes behind the Ashburn. The has uh, switched up quite a bit. Here, here we go. There there's, you go. There's Craig DeLong, Craig, there's still second. Did we not? There's Liam yep, Draper, there's so Liam. still second. Uh oh, it looks like Liam's bike is that is he smoking? No, no thought he was smoking. smoking. There. He's got he, Liam looks like he's laboring a little bit, you know. Yeah, so that is not last, third, last time fourth, and the fifth. same section. And he, he was kinda looking around, so so Craig DeLong has not only gotten around Rodney, he's actually put a little bit of a gap on that third, fourth, and fifth place spot. So he's in the position he needs to secure this 2020 XC2 title. As they run that right now, Mike Witkowski leading the way, but Craig DeLong in second, and that's all he needs to do to wrap up this title. Grant Baylor's checking in now in the number five position. We've only got top five riders checking in with six laps complete. Again, Kelly Baylor, Ashburn, uh, Lane Michael in fourth, Grant Baylor in fifth. He is 35 call it 36 seconds behind Lane Michael right now. That's another thing, Rodney, you were talking about earlier with uh, kind of him having the weight on his shoulders. Looks like Ben Kelly there. Yeah, let's, let's, the, let's check this section out. This is, it's pretty ruddy in here. Making a little mistake there, bobbling. But uh, the, I'm sure those ruts have gotten really deep. A lot of crisscross lines in yeah, there, too. There, if you there go wide, it sets right, you up inside. Right, yep. left. And then there's one line right here into probably a pretty deep, polished-off rut. Makes it look easy. 
This is a pretty cool line here going yeah, to the left. and down to yep. the left. Oh, actually, Ben stays up high. Yeah, he did. We were running that outside line yesterday, and it seemed to be a little faster for us, but it's probably gotten chewed out by now. Oh, for sure, because it's a swamp down there on the left, so you, you can't go too far. I'm sure it's gotten eat out. And like I said, the you look at the dirt at this place, and, and it looks like it's going to be good, but really all the good dirt is, has been thrown off and roost on, onto the berms. It, it's been pushed off the track. Now we're down But to we're in West Virginia. There was no good dirt to begin with. <laughs> yeah, sure. And that's why I've, I've always struggled. I, I, it's, it's taken me a long time to get good up north. And really, it's just a, a state of mind and a mentality that I, I bring, to the, bring to the track to, to attack these places. And, um, you know, with COVID this year, I, I haven't been able to ride up north as much as I would, uh, would have in the past. Um, it's a little, been a little bit unknown and then with uh, with COVID and the racing schedule, and I've been doing full gases. I I just been kind of staying home and riding riding my house in, in North Carolina, and and the dirt's you know we've had uh, record rainfall this year, so the dirt's always been good. So I haven't been able to ride in this choppy, dry, hard pack, um, slick conditions in a way. I'm not saying this is dry by any means, but it's it's similar because it's polished and it's uh it's hard pack underneath it, it looks like it's chewed up and good but uh it's it's very deceiving and on the flip side of that coin you know you talk about you being down in the carolinas and a lot of the guys riding different dirt ben kelly from the new england states up there yeah, he's been up here all year yeah he's so, actually you know. been going home all year as opposed to in the past where he would kind of spend some more time down south you know, this this so black dirt's right up his alley yeah. and, and Stu's in the kind of the same situation as me you know i, th I think uh you know Stu likes this this type of train a little bit more than myself and he's he's always been uh, been good in this stuff, but uh, but Ben definitely has an advantage when it comes to this black slick hard stuff. And you know his riding style, he, he stands up. It, it, it kills me riding behind him. Like, you know, since he's been on screen, he hasn't sat down yet. Yeah, he's no, he definitely does spend a lot of time Watch up him. on it, the it, pegs. It hurts sure. my back just watching. <laughs> he's young, bud. Yeah. Look, look at him, he's still jumping down that. He's still charging, man. He want, he wants to smoke these guys. Yeah, he's uh, he's trying to put all the time he can. Uh, so 243.30 as he went into the woods. Oh, oh, wow. Stu is Look at right this. There. Folks, and seven seconds. We started to count him out. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we're, we're ready. To, we're this, ready. Is, this is a Stu Baylor that uh, we, we've come to know the last uh, two months. You know? what, well, and, but Stu was always a good. hard charger in the last. I'm not saying he was ever bad. No, no, but, uh, but like the last, in the races, yeah, but he, he was always too made far a back to make the difference, it seemed. Where now, oh, man, I didn't see that coming. I, I, not that I expected him to drop further back. I thought he'd stay in that 20, 25 second range. I, I, He's down to sure seven did. seconds. Seven seconds for sure. But, but look at this slew of riders right here. They're, they're just they're just barely making it through the track right here. You, you, you know, each one of these guys right here, that's that's five to eight seconds yep. uh, of time lost when you get behind them. You, and and that's I call you know, I call them chess pieces. When you're out oh, there, when there's, there's that many lappers, so you got to play them like a board. You know, I, I practice with all sorts of different riders at, at my place, and uh, when, quad we're, guys. when we're taking even quad guys, even Johnny, you know. <laughs> but uh, when, when I'm out there motoring, doing lap times, and I catch them, like here's Gatlin, for example, right here. <laughs> Gatlin, like, tired. There's yeah, your brother-in-law. He's, he's sleeping. sleeping in the freaking chain right now. <laughs> uh, but no, but no. When you get behind these guys, and, and I'm doing lap times just just out of out of out of the track, moto and down. You know, I get behind him. He takes you know two seconds to get out of the way. That that actually hampers me by five to eight seconds. That's that's how much my lap time differs. So you know, you get behind three guys. There's 15 seconds easy. Especially so, on a track like this, where in a lot of cases it's very tight and twisty. Yeah. Did you did you actually pedal the whole thing? Or I, did you? I pedaled half of it, but uh, from everything I could see, especially up until this four mile marker, I don't know much past the the, the six. It gets a lot tighter. Uh, I'm sure it does, but yeah, that's that's the thing. But yeah, it, it, it's tight and twisty, and it's hard for these guys to move out of the way, and they think they're moving out of the way, but they're actually cutting you off and pushing you into the trees. Um, so it, it's nothing to like I said, 20 seconds um, back in the day. Seemed like nothing, and it's pro they're proving me right right here. <laughs> <laughs> well, 20 seconds has turned into seven as we race for the checkers here in West Virginia at the Buckwheat 100. Will Stu Baylor bridge the gap? Will he be able to make the pass on Ben Kelly, or will Ben Kelly end the second se season consecutively with the big win? Stick around to find out. TNCC Live continues after this. What just happened? When you crave the canyon passes, rocky trails, rutted tracks, the podiums and personal records, it becomes part of you. 
The choice now is, do you become a wanderer or the wanderer? You just need to ride where you belong. Born of family values and a homegrown work ethic, Kemetic Gasket seals your machine so you can focus on the finish line. Kemetic Gaskets are the competitive standard for racers who demand the very best. Kemetic Gaskets are constructed from superior materials designed to perform in the most demanding environment. Whether it's championships on the line or a day in the dirt with friends, professionals and enthusiasts depend on Kemetic. Kemetic Gaskets sealing championships since 1989. It's hard to put our adventures on hold, but now is the perfect time to prepare for their return. Amsoil has your back with fast, free shipping, and ordering has never been easier. Just look up your vehicle, select your product, add an oil change to your cart, and check out. Spend $50 on Amsoil products, and shipping is on us. Order now at Amsoil.com. Even when you're the best, you never stop striving to be better. With over 40 years of experience in motorcycle sales and service, we know racing. Our inventory of Yamaha motorcycles, sport bikes, dirt bikes, ATVs, and side-by-sides is extensive and constantly changing. Stop by Low Jack Cycle Sales today in Tarentum, Pennsylvania, and visit our online inventory at www.lowjacks.com. Yamaha YZs. It's why we ride. Hi, my name is Andrea Lee, the director of On Track School. How would you like to go to a school where we take into consideration how students learn best? Well, we do that. Because we find if we can build the curriculum around the things you are interested in, you're going to do a better job. The mission at On Track School is that educational success is possible while chasing your dreams. Not only will our staff help students to achieve success, they will cheer you on to the finish line. We encourage you to check out On Track School at ontrackschool.com, where we can help you chase your dreams and still get a quality education. Live coverage of the 2020 GNCC series on racertv.com is brought to you by MMI. Get there faster, smarter. Specialized. Specialized turbo e-bikes. It's you, only faster. And by Rocky Mountain ATVMC.com. Get ready. And welcome back to Newburgh, West Virginia, Preston County, if you will. And of course, the final 
run of this uh, 2020 season. It is round number 13 of GNCC. Rodney Tomlin along with uh, Johnny Gallagher, also Mikey Waynes, and of course our eight-time GNCC champion now with us, Caleb Russell. And Caleb, uh, you brought to our attention that there might be some incidents. We've now uh, gained some video of some of the incidents that you were talking about out there. Yeah, uh, if you look at this video here, all these guys, they're, they're going in between these the black and yellow placards right here. You see Craig DeLon's the last guy through. I think it was Liam Draper, uh, John Johnson, um, Cody Barnes, Cody Barnes yep. and Craig DeLong. And, uh, you know, there's those black and yellow placards, they, they act as a double arrows nowadays. Uh -huh. And uh, these guys have been made aware of it um, for a while. And, and you see Mike Wachowski. To the right. To the right. He was yep. inside of the double placard, so that will result in some form of a penalty. Uh, the officials will have to decide now, that after the race. Now, just out, out of curiosity, what was gained by using that line right Honestly, there? honestly, and, and this is this is the uh, the sticky part of the situation. Nothing was gained by, by using that line. It's, it's, the, it's the point of the story. The rules are rules. Right. And um, you, you put those double double arrows up, those, those black and yellow placards, and uh, they, they mark the edge of the trail. Uh, you they're have used, to go they're between them. Sparing. They're like, they're like a, a white turn pole marker out in a field. Yep. yep. Here comes Ben Kelly out at the seven mile marker. They use them in places in the woods where they're unable to or it's not uh, pertinent to put string up. Um, and that it, you have to go between those specific markers. It's in the rule book. We were all made aware of it in the pro riders meeting and that gap is Rodney what? you're making this you're making the symbol yeah it's way long yeah, now it's stretched out it was seven seconds and it appears that whatever happened that either slowed Ben down or Stu charged up has uh, gone the unless unless Stu was ahead, of ben. Stu yeah. was ahead of ben yeah, yeah we might have missed that completely missed it, yeah but it doesn't appear to be that's it that's that's a tough one there I Oh, wait we're still waiting. Yeah, I, I, mean, I don't see with without a without a crash. I don't see how he could have lost that that much time. That no. much time. This, yeah, this is waiting. He had to have been in front of him here. Yeah, I haven't or, heard. Or either. yeah, I mean anything's possible. Could have been yeah. a crash. Could have been sure. a bike issue. Um, well, For sure. I don't know if we, we can check with our producers to see do, if do they we miss, do we saw. Miss? Yeah, Stupid. maybe they can radio. Ho what yeah, about Hollywood? Saw. What's Hollywood saying? So you got any updates? All right, so we're we're gonna go to the track crew and try to get. Uh, so get the, at the, at this point in time. Uh, with with Ben coming by and no Stu, it's speculation that Stu made the pass, or he is uh, gone behind. Yeah, way behind. He's way behind. It's some some problem is happening. Here, here here's the next shot. Here. Well, wow, this is this is three miles later. This they didn't cover three, that okay, much yeah, ground so that quickly. We're waiting for him here, but we won't <laughs> see him nine minutes later. Minutes basically, we'll see him out in the field from that drone shot before we'll see him there at the uh, at yeah. the at the ten mile marker. Um, this is the tough thing about off road racing. There we All go. All right, we just got, the, we just got the. All right, new leader, new leader, Rodney. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here it is. We, we got go. a specialized rapid replay. Oh, no specialized rapid replay. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Griff. Yeah, no, no rapid replay, but here it's now all right. is, is yep. not our third place rider. Um, <laughs> Man, we're well, just, bamboozled right now, I think. Yeah, that well, oh, I'm caught off guard because when I saw when I saw Ben, I assumed we were going to see always, Stu. Yeah, always but was there ben was dust in front of him in that field, right. so apparently that yeah. was Stu. Stu was able to not only close that gap from 20 down to 7, but actually catch Ben and, and make and right, the pass. And right here before the 7-mile marker, there's there's a key hill at the at the 6.3, I believe. Yep. There's uh, That's where that I was kind of hanging out, the rocky yeah. uphill. Um, you know, this late in the race, one if, if taking the main line, one guy goes down. Yep. Uh, if, if you're in the the, the line to the left, here we go. Here's third Ashburn. Place. Yep. Third, third place, place Jordan strong, Ashburn. Strong third place. He's got a handguard missing. That's not, this would just be the rolling first. It in. He's just rolling into the first finishes. podium of the year, I yeah, believe, first, for Jordan. Very first, yeah. yeah, of the year. So good for him. I, I, I'm I'm uh, happy to see him. Uh, yeah, he, you know, he close out the year strong. Yeah, he rode a, uh, several he, races in the early part of the race. It man, seemed he, like he's, a contention. He's been, he's been up there. He's been up there, and it's just. It's, it's been tough for him to piece those, uh, the pieces of the puzzle together and, and finish out the race strong, you know? It seems like, you know, you get to those, the th fourth, fifth lap, sixth lap, something kind of happens. He falls down, loses focus, and uh, he, he kind of goes, drifts backwards a little bit. But it's, it's nice to, he, obviously, he's lost touch with these guys, but these guys have picked it up for sure. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, he, he stayed steady and uh, finishing the year out on a high note. That's good for him. Yeah, and, and as you pointed out, Ben's probably got some points to prove. Stu's still got some points to prove. Here we go. Here's hunger. the battle on the screen. Yep, there it is out in the open field section. There's Stu. Ben is Oh, man, they're close. Him. This is going to be a battle to the end, boys. Yeah, and keep in mind, folks, just ahead of them. Look at them. Look, look at Ben going to the inside. Wow. This is just a few miles we've got. This is about Something the nine-mile marker, a, a, about the eight-mile marker, actually. I, I don't know what these turns look like. Ben's got um, an inside line here. Watch this. Yep. 
Uh, that's, that's big big roots right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was squaring it up, but Stu was in the line so, that he's been using so ben, to square it up. You know, ben, Ben's done a lot of J-Days, you know, that, and this is typical J-Day race. Oh, oh, sideways. Wow. Sideways out of the berm. He lost some bike bike links there. That's, you know, that little mistake right there, that's, that's not what you want to do. He was right on him. Um, you, you give that take five, three, six three, corners three, to three make up yeah, that couple that bike three, links. Three bike links right here. But he, he's got this. This looks really steep and off camber. This whole section. Totally different line selection for these yep. riders. It's and almost this, like this right guy to on the inside is blocking Ben out. Oh, he got in the inside there. And, and you know, you say riding two different racetracks. You know, you've heard that statement a lot. But in reality, it, it can be two different racetracks. Watch this. Ben's got yep. him squared up here. Go for it. Oh, oh, here we go. Ben Kelly trying to reel yeah, in Stu Baylor once again and square going for up, the win up. here in the oh, late. Oh, Stu, blocked <laughs> Stu blocked him. That was textbook right there, Ben. Yep. He knew Ben had him squared up. Straight up the middle. Oh, oh he makes through, the pass. Gut shot at that one. Wow. He just freaking hammered it. <laughs> it looked like Stu oh, got a little man. squirrely on the bridge did, there, yeah, and he had yeah. to let out of it, and that let, allowed yeah. Ben to make the he pass. Just sent it through the ruts. Wow. And that now you. Great pass. Well, you, you see it there. You know, and, and we know that that Stu's caught him, tracked him down 21 seconds, made the pass on him, and I, I think that uh, has, like I said, that 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 hill, something must have transpired there. Right. And even before that, those lappers, you get in those lappers, you, they nickel and dime you, and there there goes your lead. But um, man, I hope the drone still, can this follow. This is still him the a battle the to the finish. Yeah. You like can... I said, it looks like Ben, just just by watching that all transpire, Ben's Ben's still gung ho. Yeah. Look, uh, Stu is having a hard time tailing him. So you know that's a good that's a that's a good sign for Ben if if he can hold that 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 seems like tight racing right there but he's not right on his rear wheel, no. bearing a mistake from Ben, Stu's not going to get around him here. And to see, there's a couple multi-line sections coming up here, yeah. and I saw, as you mentioned, Caleb, you were talking two laps ago. This section coming into the finish, basically from the 11-mile yeah, marker that's... to the finish, is gnarly. It's gotten deep, it's gotten wet, and the water's pumping up out of the ground. It's it's down to just nothing left of it. There's no nothing there. They're crisscrossing to try and get through, and that's really where this race is. I feel going to be decided here, just coming up in just under a mile. Well, see him on screen here, and there they are. It's still that close. Ben kind of miffed this corner last lap. This lap, he yep. does it clean. Stu right there, though, and you can see these guys giving it everything they have. Wow. Yeah, it's, all sh it's, all, it's all you got from here on out. The 10 mile marker, they got a mile and a half. Of this? Yeah, <laughs> this, is, this is a tight little section. Not a whole lot of room for, uh, for passing in this area. A couple this left is, riders there, too. You know, the, there's multiple lines, but I'm sure they all have the fast line figured out by now. Uh, bearing a mistake, it's kind of like I said, you, the last few turns, man, it's blown out from the quad, so it's you can't really square it up inside to outside and uh, find that traction to, to to get in on somebody unless you just act, absolutely run it in on them. And there is still those firm, two so. mud holes left. There's the one uh, actually where this crew is a, crashed. This is great, yeah, yeah. This and is then, a great race, man. Yeah. There's another one just literally two turns from the finish. There's that muddy section where they made that new there's line to the inside. You see that line right there mm -hmm. from Stu. He yeah. sucked so up he's, on Oh, look at this. There it is. No, uh, I thought he was going to gain some more time on but so lost you, it there. You, you, go one, you go one side of the trail, and it might be good in a spot, and then you lose time at the exit or, or vice versa, you know? Yeah. These lapped riders yeah. coming. Oh, look at look this. At that. See, that's. That, yep. And then it, it messed Stu up even more. Yep. Then he's got a zigzag by this guy. So okay. Ben's still leading the way. Stu's okay. still stalking still there in all, second. It's still all square where they were. They're coming up here. They're going to pop out. They got another section of pits, and then they'll have a fast section down, and then that final stretch of woods, and this is where they're coming now. This is the fast up. They're going to pop out into a field here in a fast section of pits, and Stu is right there still. Yep, still on them. Lap got riders. More lap. Lap we got around them. All right, they got a left, a, a sharp left right here, and then a sharp right down into the woods, and then there's that one final little mud hole there. Yep, that's, so a, that's it's, all that's it's in it. All clean through that. That's that's a really tricky turn right there. It's down a steep bank, some gnarly roots. It's super polished. And they got this little ridge right here, right along this hillside, and this right before you pop out into the finish area, you got this one final mud hole. I'm sure the line is pretty much established, the fast line through it. So. Barring a, a tip over, it's going to be tough to make a pass. We're going to find out here. They're going to pop out in just a matter of moments. There they are. Ben Kelly still leading the way. Stu Baylor right yep. behind him. This That's is it. the last little section of mud. Hard right-hander. Ben Kelly still leading the way. Just a couple chicanes, and they are into the finish line. There it is. They're yep. on the field. There, there's no passing here. 
So here we go, folks. Don't fall down. Don't fall at Charlie Mullins at, uh, you know, Morganton NC in 2011. <laughs> <laughs> we're, all, we're all set. So. Well, rolling in right Left, on schedule right. and right on time. There it there is. It Checker is. flag flies for Big Kelly as he takes his first win of 2020, puts the exclamation point on it and says, look at me, guys. I'm coming to at you in 2021. And that's it for the Buckwheat 100 GNCC, at least for uh, first and second. Big Kelly taking the win. Head up against Stu Baylor uh, swapping the, the back what a pass wow swapping I, it back I mean, and I forth. tell you what man that's to, to just I, I haven't seen that that bridge and then into those ruts but but Ben absolutely just sent it he did you know that that you can you can see on screen you know uh, 80 feet yeah all of the track was all ruts and just he centered across there right, right into straight the down the heart of it man I that's mean, uh that's some never give up attitude right there. You that's, know, both, that's, both those guys. Right. That was, honestly, that was, you know, I, how gutsy was you know, that? Uh, Stu didn't give up when he was down 20 seconds. He, he stayed in it. He yep. stayed on the gas pedal. And, uh, yeah, man, that's it's it's awesome to see that kind of racing. It, it reminds me of, you know, I've had these battles for, for years and years with, with Charlie Mullins and Paul Wibley and most recently Thad Duvall. Um, so it's cool to see two guys stepping up at the same time, and we're, we're in for a hell of a season oh. 21, man. Oh, yeah. Like I said, these, these two guys right here, they're, yeah. they've established themselves as, as the guys to beat, yeah, and, hands down. Yep, no doubt. And you got those other hungry, hungry ones coming in. Josh Toast is going to be back. Ricky Russell is going to be back. Uh, Josh Strang is going to be a force to be reckoned with. And, again, we're just uh, tip of the iceberg right there when we talk about those guys right now. Yeah, Trevor it's, Bollinger. It's, it's, it's going to be a great year, ball, yeah. like I said. But, but by far. Far. These these guys have shown the heart and determination. They want it. They're next in line. Uh, you know these these other guys are going to have to step up to the plate. Ben and just absolutely exhausted. Oh yeah, <laughs> he, he gave it all everything he had. Three hours, one minute, 19 seconds for uh, Ben Kelly. 1.4 seconds behind at the checker flag with Stu Baylor. Three hours, one minute, and 21 seconds. Wow. That's, that's uh, you know, reminds me of going into blackout mode. That's what I used to call it, you know. <laughs> you come to the finish, you're like, what just happened? <laughs> I've I seen that a couple of times this you year, know. I think. I mean, there was a lot of heat and things. There was a couple of races that really took a lot out of, not just you, I mean, a lot of the guys out there. Yeah, man, I, I've, I've been doing it for so long. I'm, I'm honestly really, ha really happy to see, uh, just just in my position, to, uh, to be able to take the racing to this level and, uh, you know, see these guys stepping up and battling like this it uh you know it, it makes me happy to see them get them take it to the next level right and, and it, still it, continue these battles right here because i mean this is what it's all about look at them smiling yeah you know? they're like <laughs> the dude's like oh yeah you know i, I should have gave him more throttle <laughs> just a few laps ago though that's where Stu baylor actually took the lead yeah he was able to make the pass on the outside the line he was taking and then ben kelly able to come back and pass him back in the center so it just goes to show Yeah, so, folks, we, we just saw it looked like Auntie Collinan from KTM and uh, Ben's mechanic there. I don't I don't know his name, Caleb, but Jose, uh, Jose um, they were there and, the, and they were talking with Ben. Ben was kind of discussing it. It looked like they had something serious. We are getting word, Rodney. Yes, we are getting word that there will be some adjustment in the overall. Uh, I haven't we haven't heard necessarily particularly what it's going to be. But what they're saying is hold it. I'll hold all the interviews. Don't uh, announce anything final just yet and don't even allude to it being final because we will have some adjustments how those adjustments will 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 pan out that that question remains to be answered still but if they're yeah. talking about it that quick you have to wonder if maybe yeah, Ben Kelly might be part of that yeah obviously we, we just heard that they said the overall positions may may be swapped right there and it, it's sad to see and I, I think the same is gonna happen with with X with our XE2 battle and it, it just boils down to like like I said earlier you, you got to make the right decisions every time not not every once in a while um, it, it's 25 it's feet one of those is 25 things. feet 25 feet is 25 feet you got to go in between you know this race could could be decided within you know a matter of inches of being outside of the wrong marker yeah and, uh, well, and you just you, you got to be aware at all times yep. you, I want to point out where you're thing. at you got to you got to do the right thing with with Mike Wikowski you asked the question Rodney how much of a difference does that make we're talking fractions of a second yeah. look how close that finish was right there. exactly yeah. that literally and, and we're not pointing fingers at anyone we're just the we're just the voices of reason at the end saying that when those at home sometimes will argue and say well wouldn't have made a difference anyway one and we don't know seconds. Yeah, yeah we don't know what's gonna happen with one two we hear there may be some discussions but if ultimately even if it was something similar to what we saw with Mike Wikowski that one bike length that fraction of a second could have been the difference between him making the pass in the field or not he made that pass literally by inches 
Yeah. So that's why, as you said, Caleb, it's, you know, it comes down to the rules. It comes down to the markers. The course officials right now talking with the riders. They'll make the right decision, and we'll move on from there. Yeah. And, and we can't, we, we're not going to take anything away from these guys. We're, yeah. we're not calling either, either, you know, any of these guys, you know, frauds or cheats. No. Um, it, it, it's, it's part of the rules, and they need, they need to be enforced. Right. Um, you know, if you and let, I'm sure you've you had the rule by you. Aspect, you, let, you let loose of that aspect, and um, then it's a, it starts, be, it becomes a, uh, becomes a free-for-all and uh, everything becomes a gray area but with those black and yellow placards that gets rid of the gray area you have to go between those things there's and, no and I'm sure when you've made mistakes or made wrong moves you, obviously you, I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and say I'm an angel and I've been perfect my entire career my entire life but you know I I've actually you know way back in the day I penalized myself and then I've been docked for that you know Fred Andrews can attest to that when he was running the Yamaha team when I was in 2008 I got off the track at a muddy John Pinton race um, I, came, I came to the, I, I got to the pits and I was like, I was, I was like, the last person that was in front of me was Justin Gibson at that time, and I was way ahead of him. I was like, I, I, I got off the track somewhere, and that was the year where it was a complete, right. you know, I mud remember. fest. And so I sat there, I waited for Justin to go by. I did the right thing. I penalized myself, but uh, I had penalties after the race because I, I did cut the track. So, you know, it's like, like I said, I'm, the, I'm no angel. Yeah, I, I think I think Mikey, but uh, thanks for sharing that. And Mikey, uh, are you ready down there at the podium yet, bud? Hey, Rodney, getting things set up right now. Uh, we are we've got uh, an official word, but they wanted us to hold off for a second until they informed the riders first. Uh, so here in the couple, I'd say probably less than a minute, we should be ready to roll. All right, so, so it looks like exactly that. It looks like exactly they they they, they swap positions, uh, maybe docked uh, been a position for the infraction that uh, that he uh, committed. You can see the discussion going on right now, and as you said, the courtesy of letting the riders know ahead of time so that they're not in their interview saying, well, wait, what, what do you mean I didn't win? So that's what's going on right now. Maybe we'll find out here in a minute officially, but it, it looks like that is probably the yeah, case. Yeah, it's, it's sad to see. I, like, like I said, I'm sure people can hear me, but we have, I had the same discussion with them last race. You know, this, you got to be aware. Yeah. Yep. And ultimately, like you said, I mean, it, to, for today it was for a win. It didn't affect anything in the points, but when it comes yep. down to, could, could be the difference championship. of a championship. So yep. both of these riders are, well, I mean, it sounds like Stu not, not in error today, but Ben will certainly, you know, this may be potentially one of the best life lessons or racing lessons ever oh, learned. Yeah, he's, he's you never going to make it. He's never, he's, it's never going to happen again. He gave it everything <laughs> he had. We could, we <laughs> right. could see that in his once. face when he crossed the finish line and to work that hard and ultimately, you know, have made a mistake or a misstep or an error at some point in the race that it looks like he's, it's going to cost him the win. Uh, you know, that'll stick with them, I'm sure, for a long you know, time. I, I've only quit one race in the last, you know, eight years. I learned my lesson. <laughs> <laughs> Cost you a championship. Cost Could be nine times. <laughs> yeah. you, you learn quick. Yeah. And there is Jordan Ashburn. Uh, looks like they're talking to him as yeah. well. So we'll find out if he's, oh, here we go. Looks like we got uh, Mikey Waynes with our, well, with Stu Baylor. We'll let him decide where, where he's at. Hey, thanks, guys. So to let you guys know, officially, uh, it is going to be Stu Baylor. Ben Kelly and Jordan Ashburn. That is your top three uh, due to the penalties. That, as a matter of fact, you guys have been talking about it earlier, so you know why, uh, but that is the official word. So, with that said, man, we're down here. Not necessarily the way you want to get a win, but uh, Stu Baylor, man, a win's a win. Yeah, you know, it's good. I, I got outridden today. Um, you know, Ben rode a hell of a race. He was, uh, he was really smart, strategic, uh, followed me, and put on the lines, just some edges, and I think he... Uh, he stalked his prey all day and made the move on me twice in the same spot. And, um, you know, I got balls like a like an elephant. I, that's all I know because he was holding her wide across those ruts. But, no, it's uh, it's good. Um, you never want to win like this. Um, you know, Ben's, Ben's a hell of a rider, put on a hell of a race, and, uh, you know, hats off to him. Yeah, like I say, I was, I was definitely outridden today. It came right down to the wire. A couple mistakes there on the last lap and an intense battle the last six or seven miles. It was, uh, it was gnarly. He made a, made a mistake on a, on a hill climb and was able to slip by, and then uh, we, we, we were back and forth just like I could, I could hear him. I could feel him everywhere on my where I wasn't on the track, and um, you know when you're when you're leading the race, you want to ride as conservative as, as you can while still going fast, and and that was the tough part. You know he uh, he was just hanging it out, and and he was like I said, got outridden. Hats off to him. Um, sucks the, the penalty. You know we've all we've all seen it, and it's uh the, it it sucks. There's a lot of lines out there, a lot of lines to form, and you know we've talked about it before. Um, it, it's it's hard to police, but at the same time, um, you know it. it, it 
in an, in an XC1 position, either you're a cheater or or you're getting passed. And, and, uh, and a lot of times that's the case. And um, you know, it's, it's hard to make a bad judgment. None of these guys mean to do what they do. It just it, you know sometimes you find yourself off the track. Well, Stu, uh, let's talk a couple things. One, you had a little viral video this week, so people got uh, kind of a more of an inside scoop as to what you went through this year. So, man, put this season in perspective for the folks at home on TV. Yeah, you know, we uh, I, I signed a new deal and, and everything was looking up, and um, you know, we were it sounded sounded like uh, we were going to have a, a new program for the year, and and things switched fast. You know, I, I, I after after Georgia won during the COVID the COVID crisis, we uh, we. Ended Ended up, ended up going and uh, getting knee surgery, and um, then I lost my job. Came back on a different color. I came back on a Husqvarna, then on a Kawasaki, riding some national enduros. And um, before we we went to the GNCCs, uh, we got got hooked up with Yamaha, and um, you know these guys have put together a hell of a program. And um, you know even even doing so shorthanded last minute, um, these guys have, have done everything they could, and um, you know that was awesome. And uh, I was back way early. I was back. I was back. I. I didn't start walking until the two-month mark due to my infection, um, and I was racing four weeks after that. No rehab, nothing. Just I had to. I had to make. I, I had to make a living. And uh, there's a lot more to the story that was that was overlooked. But you know, it, it's awesome. Mason did a phenomenal job, and then. Last weekend at the National Enduro, I dislocated my shoulder, so that was like another big thing. This week, all, all week long, I was like, I don't even know if I can race. And I got here, and it was like, you know, I, I feel good on the bicycle. And then I crashed on the bicycle last night, and shoulder was hurting again. But, um, you know, I, I was really fortunate with injuries up until this season, and um, just a rough season. But, you know, we're, we're coming out on top, putting these putting this, this Yamaha on the center of the box. And uh, hats off, like I said, to, to, to Ben today and, and to the whole, the whole Yamaha team, those guys are awesome there you go guys make some noise your winner here today Stu Baylor all right congratulations to Stu and what a ride that is uh, well uh, officially now I guess when you look at oh, I'm sorry I'm, <laughs> did you guys listen to that interview I mean how uh, sounding like uh, you know a, a top class guy right there <laughs> His world has changed. I hear, I hear that. Uh, well, not, not, not to say it wasn't, but uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, hey, when, when you feel when like you, you have might a be selling out a little bit. Wow, you know, when you have a microphone days, stuck you know? in your mouth <laughs> in your face that much, you gotta sometimes you start to grow into your role, and Stu's yeah. growing into someone no, that's I'm, four of the last five races. Honestly, you know, and I get grief from Stu's fans. You know, fans of Stu and fans of mine, they're they're di a different breed, and I get slack from Stu's fans. But, uh, you know, I'm a fan of Stu Baylor and what he brings to the table and how he speaks his mind. It's it, it's, it's a fresh breath of air. We, we need that in our sport. Yep. He, he brings a lot of attention. And, yep. and you know, it's, it's it's not always pretty, but uh, he speaks his mind. He's going to do that. He, he does. And he, like you say, man, I mean, he brings a lot of attention to the but that, sport. That was, uh, that was winning in class right there, you yeah. know. It, it, he didn't win, but it, it was a little bit handed to him, but that was a uh, classy way to put it. Amen. Uh, proud, proud of him. Right Let's head down to our second place interview now with Mikey Waynes. Thanks, Rodney. Down here, uh, Ben Kelly, man, um, a heartbreaker. Uh, you put in the work, you're out there. Uh, the penalty was assessed. You end up taking a second place today. And I, I know everybody at home knows as well how much you wanted this win, man. Where's your head at right now? Yeah, you know, I'm just mad at myself. I uh, got a bad start, and... Um, Worked my way through the pack, and uh, yeah, I was feeling good. And um, you know, uh, first lap, uh, you know, I stayed on the track, and uh, then some guys ahead of me took that inside line, and um, I didn't see it while I was out walking the track, so I just figured, oh, it's a better line, so I went and took it on the second lap. But the second I got into it, I knew it was, you know, too far. I slowed up, I looked, and uh, you know, I slowed up, and uh, but I knew, I knew I, I messed up, but uh, since I didn't gain position, I didn't really know, but rules a rule so uh yeah i'm bummed uh you know i don't think it had anything to do with the way the race ended up so you know uh in my mind i think i won straight up but uh yeah rules a rule so you know i understand and uh not a cheater you know i, I didn't mean to do it. it happens um so yeah but uh all in all crazy race crazy battle with Stu down to the wire and uh yeah you know came through ahead of him but penalties a penalty so it is what it is it is what it is, man. Well, talking about 2021, uh, we know what the goal is for Ben Kelly. Uh, does this fuel you even more? I mean, are you ready? I mean, let's start 2021 season tomorrow. Yeah, no, I'm ready. Uh, you know, fitness is good. Everything's good. Just, uh, you know, I've been working on the speed and 
you know, it's definitely coming back. I still definitely think I have more to give. Um, but yeah, I'll be ready for 2021 and just, you know, mad at myself for, for making that poor decision, but it happens in the heat of the moment, I guess. It happens. There you go, guys. After a penalty assessment today, Ben Kelly finishing in the number two spot. Well, there you go, guys. That's uh, that's a classy way to take one on the chin. You know, he was clearly not happy with the decision, but he also pointed out five times. I understand it. I get it. A rule's a rule. He said, I, I knew as soon as I got on that line, it was a mistake. I didn't see it when I pedaled. I saw it. Some guys take it on the first lap. I didn't. I jumped in it on the second lap, took it, and as soon as I got in it, I realized we've all been there. We took it like a man, and, you know, it's one of those things. These guys that are doing their homework and getting out there and finding out exactly which lines are, are legit, are legal, are where they're supposed to be. It's really paying off for them. Stu Baylor got the win today just by taking the right lines. True sportsman you know, on both yeah. accounts. Yeah, I think. absolutely, both of them. Yep. Here, here's oh, here's uh, Ashburn right here. Yep. Thanks, guys. Uh, down here, Jordan Ashburn, man. We've been talking about you all season. Caleb even mentioned it during the show today, kind of on that bubble, always in that fourth, fifth spot. Final round of the season. You made it happen. You put this thing on the box. Yeah, you know it's it's been a it's been a it's been a great year, but I've just been hunting for the podium all year, and you know we've been close so many times this year, and it's just frustrating going home, just being a little bit short, and I'm just super happy to to end the year on the podium and uh, come away with that number three overall for the year, and you know it's just it's it's been a it's been a couple years since I've been to the podium, so it it means a lot. Well, man, talk to us about, uh, you know, end of the season, definitely ending it on a high note. What's in store for Jordan Ashburn moving into 2021? Uh, well, there's some things going to change, definitely. But, uh, you know, I'm just ready to get back on the podium next year and, you know, be top five every race and be on that hit the podium. And, you know, who knows? We might could contest for a championship. All right. There you go. Congratulations. Jordan Ashburn taking third place here today. All right, thanks a lot. Congratulations again to Jordan Ashburn. Welcome back to the uh, box, buddy. And uh, you know, wow, you know, third third place on the day, third place overall in the in the national championship. That's you know, that's not to be taken lightly. No, Obviously, there's there's a lot of guys out this year with injury. Uh, and, and Jordan, like I said or, earlier, Jordan's been on that bubble, but uh, you know, he he brings a lot to to any team. You know, he he's. Uh, a, a veteran now yeah you know he's, he's been around a long time and he, he knows what it takes he stayed in it he, you know he, he hasn't he hasn't gone away he doesn't right. go anywhere he, he, he can still be at that he hasn't he hasn't ever won right I, I feel like this guy could you know potentially win races especially when it's muddy we haven't had a mud race all year right right you know we, we've been close but we haven't had a mud race Jordan likes, always, the mud. <laughs> Jordan likes the mud Jordan likes the mud I mean Speaking I like for the, somebody I, I, the mud. I've been praying for mud races all year too <laughs> but, but this is a guy that's maybe without a ride that just got third overall in the national championship you know he he deserves some credit right you know I have a lot of respect for Jordan he's been a long, around a long time and I, I hope the best for him Amen. And I, I agree with you. And it looks like uh, we got the best for this guy today, man. Everything came out in uh, his favor. Let's head down with Mikey Waynes, who's with Craig DeLong. Thanks, guys. Uh, Craig DeLong, man, what a gnarly season. You make the jump to the Rockstar Husky team. Uh, we saw you clicking off wins, and then you had some ups and downs. When it was all said and done, you're a champion. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Uh, they didn't go very easy for me, I can tell you that. Uh, bad start well i had a good start but it was like chaos like in the third turn and bikes were flying everywhere and i stayed clean and i was in the back of the pack and made my way towards the front and it's like a five rider battle again for the lead and i just kind of played it cool and just hung out and then try to salvage a podium you know has it sunk in yet i don't think so <laughs> we'll give you some time to let it sink in, man. Let you get rehydrated. Uh, Craig, put the season in perspective, man. With the ups and downs you had, the jump to the Rockstar Husky team, uh, talk to us a little bit about what it took to, to put the whole thing together. Uh, it was good. I mean, it, the whole crew was, was really good. You know, they they kept me calm when I when I needed to be and I, when I wasn't. So uh, huge thanks to those guys and for being just professional and, and easy going. You know, I'm a kind of a, a new kid when it comes to a team like that so uh they they treated me very well and uh yeah i can't thank him enough there you go craig delong congratulations he is your xc2 2020 gncc champion
Yeah, and, and I'll tell you, I don't know if you guys heard or noticed when he came through the finish line down there, you could hear, I think they were interviewing Stu Baylor when that was going on, and this place erupted. You could hear the finish line, and we're several hundred yards away from the finish line. It yeah, was going nuts it's, down there. It's been a long time coming for Craig. You know, he, he's been at XC2 for quite a while now. Been on that coastal team, stepped up to the Rockstar Husky team this year when the, those guys went out with injury, uh, and he really delivered, got them in, back in the top 10, and uh, won the championship. Uh, it's, it's been a great year for him. He's been consistent all year. You know, Johnny Girard was kind of the, the key figure to beat, but uh, Craig was uh, the, the most consistent guy all the way through, and Mike gave him a great challenge. But um, just make, fell a little bit short. Fell a little short. Good. Should make for a good championship again next year. I know Mike Wachowski will be back XC2, and I imagine Craig will XC, be back to the defense. You know, XC2 is going to be a barn burner next year, boys. <laughs> you know, those, those three guys are still in the class. Uh, they're all hungry. They're, they all want to win. And, you know, they're just as fast and just as capable as the top XC1 guys. Well, Stu Baylor gets the overall win in this one after a, uh, an assessment of penalty. And it looks like that uh, Ben Kelly will take second. Jordan Ashburn will take the number three spot as far as the overall is concerned. Guys, that's pretty much putting a wrap on it for the day and for the 2020 season. Johnny, thanks for being along. Caleb, thank you so much for stopping by today, man. Yeah, no worries. I'm glad, I'm glad I could. Uh, stop in for a little bit. And maybe we'll a see bit you inside. some more next year. You never know. I mean, I, I might be around. I like being on the track better, but uh, <laughs> you can stop in. Just I, I, I like watching the TV screen. Everything's in front of me. I got, I got the results. The times <laughs> makes it uh, nice. Cold good. water in front of you. Cold water in front of me. It's, we're, we're living life. Perfect. <laughs> for Mikey Waynes, Johnny Gallagher, and the eight-time GNCC champion Caleb Russell, I'm Rodney Tomlin. Have a great day, everybody.